it actually looks decent, Phil. Definitely uh, check out the uh, check out the trailer. I think you would you would appreciate that. I forgot to TV or film. Uh, film. Okay. Forgot to because yeah, you know that's the problem with TV, right? It's it's too much of an investment. Whereas if I say, hey Phil, you want to go watch this movie? Two hours of your time, right? Hmm. But a show, if I say, hey Phil, watch this show, it's like, oh God, it's, we're into season six now. You know what I mean? It's kind of well, it's very it, daunting. Just for me, I mean, people will say, have you seen X? And I'm like, is it TV? Yeah, but then I haven't. Yep. It, You're not the, a the huge Doctor Who fan? <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> I mean, it, like historically, some of them were okay. I, I like the old Tom Baker days because he was just like a real eccentric. What about Coronation Street? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because we actually pipe in British entertainment into Canada. I don't know why. Lord knows why. I guess apparently too much American equals get more British. But the thing is, British soaps always tend to be about the, the poor and the downtrodden, whereas American soaps tend to be about the, the rich and high society. I know which I would rather watch. Yeah. Phil, it's 32 degrees in Calgary today. It's killing me. <laughs> yeah, it's... Because um, obviously I had court case and whatnot. I had a Masonic meeting the day after I was in London for a couple of days. Now, it was about similar temperatures there, so I was melting. So I didn't bring like shorts and t-shirt or anything. So I was in like sort of full clothing. Oh, that oh that sucks, Drex. If it's if it's ninety five degrees outside and you have to be dressed up, isn't that the worst? Yeah, very rare that it happens, but when it does happen, you know you you feel it. You know what I mean? I, I think it's ninety five. Yeah, so, so I don't know. Someone check the map on that. I think thirty two Celsius is like ninety or ninety five Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's and then of course because it's Alberta, we have thunderstorms bubbling up everywhere, and when they're when they cut through that kind of heat, they're potent. So. Yeah, it's ninety degrees Fahrenheit for thirty-two, so it's yeah. fairly hot. I mean, not, not exhaustingly so, but yeah, it's not like Death on. Valley. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would was... die. I would die instantly if I was if someone teleported me to Death Valley and it was like one hundred and twenty Fahrenheit there. I'd just fall over. <laughs> yeah, it was getting to 34, 35 in London. Well, you guys got the heat island effect there, too. Like, the city yeah. gets a lot hotter than out in the countryside. Now, F Phil, I was, made to, uh, I was made to believe that that was the end of the world. Like, London has never seen 34 degrees before. Oh, I mean, it has. It's just, there, there were memes on the internet where, like, you know, 1986, this is what, like, the uh, the weather forecast looked like. And it's just, sort of, like, nice, happy, sort of, like, sunny icons dotted all over the United Kingdom map. Uh, whereas now, 34, 35 degrees, and everything was in a crimson, blood-red color as though we were all going to, like, die off in a, an apocalypse or something like that. I saw that. Drex, did you see that? They did that about uh, the states, too. Like, they used to mark, um, on, on weather maps, if it was, like, 85 degrees... They'd mark that as like maybe a yellow on the map, you know the the color uh, the color oh, map, yeah. right? Well, Purple thought, for like I thought, cold. I thought eighty five used to be kind of like uh, yellow orange, right? So had, yeah, so like you had yellow was basically mild, like you know warmer was like that yellow orange. Nineties I think was like orange, and yeah. anything over a hundred was red, red. or brown. Like yeah, yeah. Ten was brown. <laughs> yep. Right. Nowadays you look at a, a map of the U.S. and it's showing the temperatures red is 80 well yeah because they have to push for uh global warming yeah. yeah yeah that's that's a pure political move i mean i didn't that didn't uh slip past a guy like me i was able to see that um oh my god did i just misgender myself yeah. not a guy <laughs> oh with that <laughs> let's guy. hit the intro Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 89 of the Big Town Podcast, the only big source of the show if people take on the government and actually win. As usual, I'm producer Tim. Joining me is the mayor of Big Town. Drex, say hi. 
Hello, everybody, and hello to our very special guest who, I mean, as you know, he knows he needs no introduction, but uh, Dollhouse Phil has joined us because if there is one thing that truly gets my dick hard, it is hearing men win in court. I love you. Every time I hear a story about a man winning in court, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the channel, Phil, Strong Successful Male, SSM. Yes. Yeah. He has lots of videos of guys winning, right? Because, like, you know, maybe they, they were a reform simp, something happened, they grew a pair, and then, like, they win. Every time you hear a story of a dude winning, don't you just kind of have, like, the, that little extra pep in your step, like, ah. <sighs> Yeah, just sometimes a guy just needs a win, or to hear of someone having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. Win. Just just hearing of a guy winning, like like it fills me with glee. I'm just like God. Just every time I hear about a dude winning, man, like you know, some chick tried to finesse him in court, and then they come back and they they go ahead and turn the tables. It's like, oh God, that feels that just sounds great. It feels great. Phil, we're gonna start off and get right into it. Can you describe the case for everybody? Okay, in late 2019, um, a customer ordered a Piper doll from me, an Akira doll, 150 centimeters tall, which is just shy of five feet, like literally a fraction of an inch. Um, it's the small-breasted version, which, and when we say small-breasted in the sex doll industry, we mean like average female-breasted size. Um, and she's kind of got an oriental slash anime sort of quality going onto the face. So it kind of looks like a little super stylized rather than like uber realistic. But Border Force, who is the, um, the bully boy arm of uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, decided, oh no, I think that's a child. Therefore, I'm going to seize that under whatever uh, ruling and uh, amendments that have been made to said rulings in British law. So it took me a while to find this out. Now, when something gets seized by customs, they're supposed to let you know that this has been seized because then you can then lodge a complaint or like, I suppose, even technically apologize or speak to them and say, well, that's not what I ordered or any of those sorts of things. But they didn't say anything. I had to go back to the Chinese shippers, say, I have my suspicions. Can you find out what's happened to this shipment? Because it's been far too long in customs. So it took them a few days and then they found out that it had been um, seized. Um, so I started getting in contact with uh, both the, the courier and HMRC to say, um, I want to know what's going on. I have heard that it has been seized. Now, what they were doing was when they seize the product, whatever it happens to be, there's a certain level of time that, um, a time frame, if you like, a window of an opportunity to lodge a complaint against this. They deliberately left it so there was only two days left before they told me that it was, had officially been seized. So I immediately lodged the complaint. They returned to me to kind of say, well, you, you, you were outside of the window of opportunity. So I complained again. And uh, I managed to like push a few buttons and they allowed the complaint to go through. And then you get the standard boilerplate email uh, and an actual hard copy letter a bit later on stating, you are within your rights to complain about the seizure and uh, we can go to court over this. However, it, it is good practice for us to let you know that should you lose, um, this could result in a criminal conviction and... And if you lose, you will probably have to bear the costs of us going to court. So you would have to then pay their costs as well. What, what about this is criminal? Well, it, because it's been seized, it's, you've broken the law by bringing in an obscene object. So, and this was the other thing that was happening at the same time. Can they define now, as, as per the law, he or she who imports the obscene object has broken the law. Now, I was even telling HMRC, well, I am the importer, so let's get it on. But no, they sent the local police around to the customer's house. And then it, they took his computers like they had done with me before, took his mobile telephones, anything that could contain CP. So uh, that happened. Then he was under caution. And then I, I got all of the, the complaint underway and said, right, let's get a court date. Let's get this on. So the police said to the, the customer, well, we will just halt all proceedings until we hear what's happening with the complaint. Because 
you know, obviously if I'm successful, any case against the customer just evaporates into the air. Mm-hmm. So I went on um, and I launched a, a barrage of um, communications through to HMRC, um, quoting legal precedents and so forth, that if something is legal to own in the country, legal to purchase in the country, it should be legal to import into the country. But to no avail. Um, and round about this time, then COVID starts kicking in. So by the time we get like a court case, it then gets delayed. We can't do anything while COVID's going on. Six months go by, then we, oh, we've got another court date. That gets delayed because somebody can't make it for whatever reason. And it just kept on, kept on going for about 18 months until we got a court case. And as if the will of God did not want it to happen, we actually had like really high winds. So I managed to turn up to court. The customer turned up to court. I think Border Force turned up to court, to, but because one of the magistrates couldn't turn up because of the, the wind, it got adjourned. So we, Let me pause you right there, Phil. What do you yeah. think about that? Because I, I went through something similar uh, when I was in family court. The, the trial date, this is it. This is the end of the road, right, for the court. Hmm. The judge was not there. Just wasn't there. Just didn't show. And then, now, don't get me wrong. There was a, there was like a you know, heavy set. I, think, I can't remember if it was a blizzard or not. But like, what do you think about the fact that judges aren't held accountable for for their presence? I, I couldn't. Well, this was the first time I'd ever come across this, and I thought, well, Holden, if I had not turned up, this court case would have uh, happened in my absence. So I, yep. I thought this should have just been thrown out. Yeah, but it's not, right? No, nope, no, nope, it is um, not. You, you must bend to their will. Bend to their will. And something else that I found very peculiar about what you said when you got seized. They wanted to search you for CP, right? So they're searching you for cheese pizza. Hmm. Did you ever ask yourself this this question, Phil? Let me search you for cheese pizza, right? Hmm. Because usually you know how this works, right? The people who are most anti something, what does that usually mean? Oh God, yeah, that they're, they're, they're hiding exactly. They're like hiding they're, exactly like the Democrats. Whenever they accuse the Republicans of doing anything, they're just announcing that they're going to do it themselves a bit yep. later on. Yep. But, uh, yeah, uh, always the case. Always. Well, let me ask you this, though. So, so you're in court. What was their strategy versus what was your strategy for victory? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I immediately, when all of these court cases were initially being drawn up and drafted, I went and got myself a, a decent solicitor, um, I mean, you guys will call them lawyers in the uh, in the U.S., but we break the the lawyers up into two areas. The solicitor is like kind of the more the low uh, lying kind of lawyer who will deal like with the customer and stuff like that. But then when we get to a, like a magistrate court or a crown court, you really need a barrister who's a high ranking. And my solicitor got a high ranking sort of like barrister involved who's you know got like a lot of experience dealing with HMRC and stuff like that. So. Our strategy was essentially we just pulled out the heavy hitters straight away, mm-hmm. and um, the opposition they'd taken. I mean, if you can imagine, this is evidence. They're photographing the doll from various angles and stuff like that, and height is going to be one of the the key issues. And they couldn't even really take a decent photograph or a video, just going from with the tape measure next to the doll, like and follow it from the foot all the way to the head. Like they would take a picture of the tape measure next to the foot, even at a bad angle, so you couldn't even read the tape measure properly and say, right, that's one photo. And then they would take a picture with the head. Now, it had a different colored tape measure next to the head. So it clearly wasn't the same tape measure. Now, it sounds absurd. Now, the thing is, what normally happens in this situation, doll gets seized and say, right, you can take us to court if you want fully knowing well that 99.99% of people will say, no, I don't want to risk my photo being in the newspaper or anything like that. I could lose my job. So they just disappear. But of course, they weren't banking on that somebody like me would come along and go, yeah, let's get that on. Come on, let's do it. Kind of thing. So their evidence was absolute dog shit. So, and uh, because... The, I don't think anyone's ever challenged them before on it all. I think I'm probably the first guy. That. Are you the first? I think to your so. Knowledge? I mean, I, I, we've looked around. We can't. There, there have been cases where people have been taken to court where they've, um, like, directly gone to a vendor in China 
ordered the doll, it's turned up, it's like th three feet in height, and they didn't realize. And that's what they've used as evidence in their case when they got t taken to like criminal court. And they, uh, there's a number of these people gotten away with it. Because you look at the images that were on the website and it doesn't look three feet. But now, yeah. did you explain to them why the doll is the size? Is because of the weight? Oh, yes. My initially, my barrister went into great detail on all of these things. And he explained, you know, there's a grade 308 steel skeleton in the inside of the doll. So if we pump this up to sort of like five foot eight, you're going to be pushing about 50 kilos. And you might think, well, I bench more than twice. That's not an issue. And say, well, okay, get your barbell, put a load of TPE around it. So you can't grab the, uh, the barbell properly and it's moving yep. in your hands. Give it a couple of hinges and then it's going to be all over the place. It's very difficult to lift. Um, and there was a whole host of other things. My barrister, perhaps because he's not very experienced around the whole doll thing, even when we were just talking privately, he would just say, I don't see the point. It's just a doll. Like, there's no victim wow. here. What's the problem? So yeah, he kept on. Yeah, victimless crime, right? And he was pushing this. And so, that, now it is a doll. And um, we did get a pediatrician involved because we knew we were going to get pushed on this issue. And um, our pediatrician had kind of come in, he did, wrote up um, a full scientific report and explained, came to his conclusions that this is uh, a mature adult female. So, of course, the opposition were going to quiz him on this. And they say, right, so how have you come to these conclusions? And what the medical establishment often use to um, judge maturity going from juvenile all the way through to adult are what they call Tanner stages or the Tanner scale. Uh, like it'll start, like say, like for a female, like the breasts will start budding at first and then they'll start to grow and then there'll be changing shape of the nipples and the areolas, all of these sorts of things. And when you get to stage five, you're actually a f full adult female. And the opposition kept on trying to pin him down. So, well, what age could this be? And the pediatrician was having none of it. He would say, it doesn't matter. You've got like a full range of ages that this could be. The Tanner scales do not tell you what age you should be at a level of maturity. It just tells you what stage of maturity you're at. Mm -hmm. Because we've all seen, you know, there's been a 13 or 14 year old with fully developed breasts. Like, yep. you know, there's people that we've known and you think, how the hell did that happen? So, you know, biology is weird. So you can't pin anything down to an age. Although the, the opposition had, they'd pulled out a, in the final court case that we had, pulled out a very good barrister. I have to admit, he was, he was impressive, but the pediatrician was better. He was not going to be moved on his professional opinion. So tried to pin him down on, well, could this perhaps be in the age range, perhaps a 14 year old? And he said, well, as an outlier, maybe 1% for that, but for, I would 99% say that this was an adult female. So he's admitting that there could be a range. And he, he completely convinced the judge with what he was talking about there that we haven't nailed down what the age of the doll would be, but we have nailed down that it is mature, biologically speaking, in yep. terms of shape and appearance. So that worked. So again, my barrister brought up the idea, well, it is a doll, so age is irrelevant, right? Surely all we have to do is judge the doll on its uh, biological shape and level of maturity. Mm -hmm. So, and if it's mature, then therefore we can only really assume that it's an adult then, right? So he's kind of pushing it that way. And then, and it was time for the customer and myself, well, one after another to be put on the stand and quizzed. And I was asked various questions by my barrister, but it's all easy stuff. Do, do, like asking me, do you actually supply any childlike dolls? No. And I, I, get, I went into my history and stuff where I'd been investigated by the NCA and so at the time, it was these three foot dolls, the, which were all the ones which were being uh, seized. So I stopped selling those. And then when I got investigated, I was told 140 centimeters, a four foot seven was going to be the threshold. So I stopped selling those. And now the scope creep goes on again. So, but anyway, so I, I answered all of those questions um, all rather nicely. And it was the barrister then went into uh, points of, well, it the face kind of looks quite stylized. I don't think this is actually meant to be an accurate representation of a human face. So I went into detail to explain what anime was, how it had come from manga in Japan <laughs> and stuff like that. 
and explained all of that. So then the conclusion was brought by my barrister that, well, this doll from this exotic range, as you call it, Phil, within Piper dolls, is not meant to be super realistic. Because the guy who actually sculpts these dolls, Mitsuwali, he's done one or two really um, realistic looking dolls, mm -hmm. but they're not part of like, you know, the, the Akira or Ariel or the Phoebe Correct. range and stuff like mm -hmm. that, which could be easily demonstrated. Now, this was all like the stuff you know, being brought up um, on our case. Oh, the customer as well. He had spent five years out in China and he'd gotten into a long-term relationship. I mean, it's a simple art, but um, what he was doing after that had all gone southwards, he came back to the UK and he was going to get a doll and loosely base it on his old fiance. Hmm. Because he was getting quizzed. Do you not think this is very short? For a woman, he said, well, I've spent five years in China. A lot of these women are this height. It's pretty normal for me. So like every opportunity that they were trying to knock against us, yep. it was just kind of getting swat to one side. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that they saw this coming. I think they thought, oh, we're going to pin them down on this one. So, But you must accept that a Western height of woman would normally oh, be a lot taller. And but it's you like, just yes, be from China well, and move to London, right? Well, what stops uh, that happen? Or just so, a short person? When living in Chislehurst, I would see a mother and daughter um, walking off to school. It's primary school age, but the, the mother was the same height as the daughter. And she was less than 150 by a good margin. So it does happen. But all of that anyway, and that was before they shot themselves in the foot with all of this measurement issue. They said they, they measured the doll at 140 centimeters. Now, these dolls are injection molded you could maybe get plus minus one centimeter, like less than half an inch in height difference. Mm -hmm. But, and they were since 140 centimeters and they showed the pictures. The initial picture of the, of the doll is with the head oh. like that. <laughs> and so, well, you know, when you get measured um, by the, the nurse or the doctor for your height, when you get a medical, stand up straight, pull your head back, I want to yep. see your full height, no slouching. And there's all of that. And they're just outright lying because now bearing in mind, in the previous case that we'd had, when we tried to get the case thrown out, was because the p local police had destroyed the doll erroneously. Oh, really? So there was no evidence to actually check. And this was a big point by my barrister as well. And so, well, the, the onus of responsibility lies on HMRC to produce the doll if they say it's this height. But, well, we can't prove this now, can we? <laughs> destroyed. Phil, what are the yeah. chances that someone took it home? I think the problem was that they'd initially made these um, horrendous uh, photographs to indicate that it was 140 by, like, you're messing with stuff. And then when they finally looked as though they were going to get called out, it's like, shit, we need to get rid of this. Otherwise, we're going to get like look really stupid in court. So somebody accidentally destroyed the doll. But that's just my best guess. Yeah, it sounds like maliciousness, not uh, incompetence, which is actually a that that's a departure from the norm. Usually, local police no, are just incompetent. My barrister said exactly that. He said, "I can see where you're coming from, Phil. Wed, like you know, the, and it would make sense. But having dealt with the criminal side of things, so dealt with uh, the local police forces a lot of the time, there's no level of incompetence which is too low for the local police. Oh, they're they're less than useless. I mean, they're getting the the you know, none of them are the brightest bulb in the bunch. Now, Phil, you talk about how, you know, different people that you came across, whether it be the barrister, the, you know, the judge, this guy, the cop, everybody, everyone has different views on just like different views and different levels of awareness with dolls and with even with anime, right? Well, let me ask you this. You talk to your clients, right? So let's, let's, let's just say for the sake of argument, you're only dealing with your clients. Because you think, you know, let's just say this could have happened anywhere, right? This could have happened in England. This could have happened in Asia, you know, anywhere, right? You, you can wind up, you know, in this, in this hot water. What are the different views around the world with your clients on the perception of these dolls? Like, like you know, what cultures are more, you know, pr let's say pro doll versus what cultures are more like, no, not these dolls. You know what I'm saying? Like, what have you found it's, with that? The, the there's a fairly easy split. I mean, the further you push out into Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. the attitude is it's just a doll, piece of plastic, or whatever euphemism you want to use. It's just a thing. Like if you pick up a, a plastic pen and smash it into little bits, it's not violence. It's just an 
inanimate object and the doll is the same so now of course this does have a knock-on effect like in the likes of china and japan you will get dolls that look like six and seven year old girls so and they're just well it's just a doll who cares i mean like the japanese guys will take them out like in like little wheelchairs and stuff like I've that. Take them at that. a restaurant yeah it's a, a bit weird now of course you would like to think there's a happy medium between the two because if you push out west then you get it's just like an army of virtue signalers because we've got like this moral panic which is going on about pedophilia in the west at the minute and everyone wants to stand up and point the finger and shout pedophile and that's it's as though people get points for doing this because it makes them feel morally virtuous for mm -hmm. whatever reason so everyone wants to see a crime in the west which is where i think my case came from whether my border force officer was like looking to get a feather in his cap at work or i thought perhaps maybe the akira doll maybe reminded him of like a niece of his or like a friend of the family and he couldn't look at the doll without seeing that person mm -hmm who might have been 13 years old, so he couldn't get past that. But this is all very subjective, and we have to get away from the subjectivity and get to some objectivity, which is why I think we need, like, a dedicated criteria. So now that I've given HMRC, like, quite the bloody nose, because they did not expect to lose that one, they nearly lost on costs as well. The only thing that saved them on the, on the costs was that the Border Force officer um, followed procedure, and all the criteria that had been given for all that they're flawed in as much as you can possibly say but he did his job so the, like uh, the costs for this case are still borne by me now i'm glad you brought up costs because it's something that i've talked about being in court myself and you know phil what is like i said you don't have to go to like an exact dollar amount but like give us like an idea of like the full cost of dealing with court in terms of like the, the the mental and the physical toll, obviously there's a financial toll. Like, what does that take on you when you're going through all this? Because you said stretched um, out over 18 months, right? Oh, God. well, it'll be longer than that now, now that we've had a couple of court cases. Um, I mean, well, December t uh, 2019, all the way through till August 2022. But I can see how it would really um, grind on someone if you're really worried about it. my first one when I had the NCA come after me because I'd never had any issue with the police before and then I'm dealing with like high level police they're the ones that like usually go up tooled up and bulletproof vests after people mm -hmm. um, that got me worried for a, a while but then having had that going through this I mean technically speaking there was going to be no criminal proceedings against me so I wasn't greatly worried but I just thought I it would play on my conscience if I just walked away from it and allowed the customer to just kind of carry the can. So like, I thought that this is the right thing to do. So went ahead and the, the length of time it took did help me with the costs. Cause it, you know, I could do you know, a, a few thousand, like every month and stuff like that, just pull that to one side and keep yep. for legal costs. And it's, it's only run up to about, I say 35,000 pounds, which I suppose, what's that? 40, 42, uh, USD. Which, oh, you're just which for the average person that would bankrupt them if they got a yeah, bill yeah, like that yeah. in one year. Yeah, I mean, Phil, you think about that. On top of people's, you know, their other costs, right? Like, you know, your other just basic cost of living. One of the things that I think really benefited you in this case is that at the end of the day, Phil, you're a single man unmarried with no children. Imagine yeah. if you had wife and kids. Like, like, I mean, let's face it, even when you first got stopped, I believe if you had a wife and kids, you would have dropped it. Yeah, you probably. see what I'm saying? Because the the risk of of dealing with all this, you're like, hey man, I got a wife and kids, right? Like, th because you know, a financial any risk of financial ruin, the idea that you know your your family could be affected, I think that's why a lot of guys just you know they just say, hey, yeah, I'm not going to deal with it. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to derail it, but um, it kind of brings it to the fore why the various authorities in in the West really hate MGTOW guys because mm -hmm. because yeah. we can actually withstand like quite a lot and if I'm the, the first in the avalanche as such, then maybe we are going to start fighting back and stuff like that. Because I, I've noticed, um, obviously, I, I made an announcement within the doll community that, the oh, Phil wins, all of that sort of thing. And everyone's been talking about it, and even vendors who didn't really want to talk to me about like forming a professional body to actually fight a lot more of these fights going forward. People are starting to come forward now and starting to think, mm -hmm. Phil, that's a really good idea. I just feel like the Mortal Kombat announcer, Dollhouse Phil, wins. 
flawless victory. Flawless victory. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... Now, you said If so I'd gotten yourself. cost, it would have been flawless. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? If, if you said so yourself, Phil, you're like, you were the one person who was not afraid to have your face on this court case. If you yeah. had kids, that's a totally different story. Yeah, completely. Because I mean, the last thing you want to hear is one of your kids come home from school and say, hey, my friend said that, uh, you know, you were in the newspaper for this thing. I mean, there is that. But what that does, then um, it forces a man into like a mold of cowardice. I mean, even if you've got like wife and kids and that's happened to you, I would still think it's better to say, All right, OK, no fucks given. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Because you're probably going to end up like in, in some newspaper anywhere. So like just wear it with pride. Weirdly, because the customer in question in, in all this is a little bit autistic, has a little bit of social anxiety. He kind of like, he, he he carried it really well because he just told all his friends, all the people he worked with, he said, yeah, I've been taken a court over a sex doll. What do you think of the sex doll? And he pulls like a, a image of Akira out. All of his friends and so forth and his family members were all like, that's not a child. What are they talking about? So that kind of boosted him somewhat. That whole sort of don't give a shit attitude. Yeah. Well, you know, it's crazy. Even, even when you said like, you know, in a scenario where you have a kid, right? And who a kid at school, there is a flip side to that. If you and the kid are confident, you're like, yeah, my dad's taking on the system. You know what I'm saying? He's taking on the man. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there aren't that many kids who just have that testicular fortitude, you know, in general. But I do want to ask you this though, Phil, you're, you're dealing with this and who do you think are the most unintended winners and losers from your trial win? Um, I mean, there's a lot of um, people who've been watching like for the last two years, watching to see what happens with Akira, because there's a lot of people who actually like the Akira doll, but everyone's been too afraid to uh, to purchase. Um, but I suppose they're going to be the intended winners out of this, uh, rather than so much me. Um, the unintended winners will probably be the other vendors who like actually like see my actions and go, oh, now I can start importing mm -hmm. Akira now. Which, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, that's, that's rather unfair, Phil. You you were the one who stumped up the money. You should actually have exclusive access to this one. But, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Um, what else were you asking on that one? Because that's just well, unintended like, like, winners. Like, from a societal level, right? There's mm -hmm. gonna, there's always unintended consequences. I, I actually texted this to Tim before the show when he was mm -hmm. like, you know, wins in court are actually, you know, basically kind of minuscule, right? And I said, there's one big, huge positive of winning in court. It doesn't matter what the win is, is that laws can wind up getting changed. This is one of the unintended consequences. The government oversteps their boundary, right? Someone fights back. Doesn't matter who that someone is. However, because they fought back, it allows eyes and ears to get onto an issue that a lot of people may not have known about or cared about right hmm. and then in turn they go wait a minute they're trying to do what and then like laws wind up getting changed because the people basically turn against you know whatever like the government standard is right the societal standard yeah because i mean phil think about it okay let's go back uh 80 years ago there weren't all these sex toy shops there was a lot you know a lot of stuff didn't exist 80 years ago right so how does this exist now because Okay, I'll give you an example in America. Two live crew took their court, their case, I believe, all the way to the Supreme Court with the First Amendment, right? Because the the uh, the cucks were trying to say that this is obscene, right? You know, all these you know, rap videos, this is considered obscene. Well, guess what? Larry Flint of Hustler fame had the same mm -hmm. issue. He's like, wait a minute. Obscene basically boils down to a subjective reality, right? Because, you know, he showed pictures of a slave's you know, uh, you know, lit up back, right? He goes, I find this obscene. Most people find this obscene, right? If you show that at dinner, most people wouldn't want to see that, right? Mm -hmm. However, he's like, but if you show a naked woman or, you know, you got breasts or whatever, he goes, so, so are you sure that's obscene? You see what I'm saying? Because it's all subjective, right? And so they, they kind of went up with a foot in their mouth to kind of like, because if you start trying to say, I dictate what's obscene, right? Mm -hmm. You wind up with, with, with a real big problem. And I think that's kind of where, where you were at, where you're like, who says this is a child, right? Well, th this is kind of the thing. Um, the original law that they're using to actually designate the doll as obscene, it's about 200 years old. And it was when printed pornography was like just being born as mm -hmm. such. And there was an absolute ton of it coming into the country. And uh, 
this would be like 18 something or other. Um, and so they wrote this law just thinking, you know, it's only ever going to cover this, you know, this printed filth, correct, as they call correct. it, right? Yep. But because it's so broadly worded that, you know, this border, border force officer could look at a set of knives and forks and designate that as obscene. Oh, I think it's phallic or, you know, whatever. So yep. therefore it's obscene. Now, th- this gives border force the right to effectively write the laws as to what can come into the country. Now, once yeah. it's in the country, it's perfectly legal. That's Isn't that crazy? It is, I mean, think about it. In, you know, the, uh, the irony of that feels is that that adds another layer of corruption, right? Because if you can get in completely, to, if you can wind up whoever, right, whether it be you or an organization, can get into the the, the border patrol, right? Hmm. You've seen this happen with, with prohibition, where you can start saying, "Hey, guys, allow these," because you've seen how these things work, right? Let's say there's a union or whatever, or you know, you got government workers, whatever. If you can get in control of people's X, Y, and Z, right, and you know when they're going to work, well, if you know when you're going to ship something and who's going to be there, right, if X amount of people are compromised, especially if you have a superior, right, and he knows, like, oh, yeah, that package is going to be, you know, this day. And then someone goes, oh, I think this is obscene. And then the the the, the boss comes in, goes, oh, uh, nope, let it through. You see what I'm saying? Well, I, I had a plan for this. If this really got out of hand, mm-hmm. I was going to have to hire somebody to do, you know, the day-to-day ins and outs of like dolls coming in going forth dealing with a few emails and i would go and get myself work with border force and then become a customs officer and i'll make sure all all of the shipments go through my port where i'd like when i'm on shift and i'm just going yeah that's okay that's okay it's perfectly fine like like, you if you see how insane do like let's see when you deal with subjectivity, these are the, one, the kinds of things you deal with, right? Because like they'll yeah. allow something else in, and people are going, "Wait a minute, you allow this?" Like, like a sane person can look at something and go, "This is, you know, fundamentally wrong." And they're like, "Well, this this isn't a problem." And then like something else, like you said, whether it be a doll, whatever, they think that's the problem. And you know, I look at this whole, this whole thing, right? Phil, when you go through court cases, you know what this is like, where people kind of reveal themselves on peripheral level, right? And I want to ask you this, um, you know, what community or people or, you know, groups or whatever were your biggest allies or enemies, right? Like, were you surprised at, like, you know, who was against you in court or who was for you while you were in court? Um, well, it, when I initially started up the business, I used Doll Forum um, to give me some credence in the industry. Because what they do, they'll verify, they'll check all, they'll, you know, communicate with your suppliers. Do you know Phil Bass, the dollhouse? Um, is he supplying this, the, these brands? So, and they would verify all of this. And then you could get the stamp of, of sort of like to certify that you are doll, doll forum certified. So you are the real deal. Mm-hmm. So when all of this kicked off, I approached doll forum. So I, I might need potentially a, an expert witness. Would you guys be willing to, you know, albeit remotely, but would you be willing to speak on behalf? And they were like, fuck no. Yep. So, oh, right. It. Fuck you then. And around about the same time, Doll Forum um, banned the use of any images of Piper dolls because they're just saying they, they just look too uh, childlike to us. And it, I don't know whether advice to this came from or if they just came to that conclusion themselves. But that created a big old stink in doll form because a lot of people who actually like Piper dolls and disagree that they look like children. And um, I mean, like it, one of the managers of doll forum, when I was having the conversation with them, was saying, well, my wife is a nurse and she says it looks like a 13 year old. So, you know, I, I bit my tongue rather than say, well, if she's a nurse, she's not that good because she was just good. She'd be a doctor. Right. But. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well, I've gotten the last laugh because he's, you know, saying, oh, it's definitely a 13 year old. And said, well, I've got a, a magistrate who says otherwise. And we've now got a legal precedent. Unbelievable. Like, well, this is what's crazy is that, uh, like I said, when I think about some of SSM's shows, he's talked about how when, when guys wind up getting themselves in a bind, the, the most shocking thing is like their family members take her side. Or in this mm. case, like you said, you're thinking fellow doll guys are going to be pro Phil, and then they they're not, and you're like, wait a minute. And I think you said it before. I think you said was it was like the trans community was was actually for you, or like certain feminist organization. I've so had like a number of feminists people? who who have um, interviewed me and so forth, and they seem to the, the, where their ire is directed is it sex robots, even though they don't really exist at the minute. We've got mm-hmm. some dolls with animatronic heads with a very basic AI, but they're not very good, to be fair. 
and they don't seem to feel threatened about uh, dolls, to be honest. So, like, they've never really been an issue. Mm -hmm. Feminist. I, I wouldn't necessarily say they'd be pro doll, but maybe it's because women are getting into dolls as well. So, like, they, they can't really be a, a anti doll. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that, that obviously put a damper in, in their plans. Um, now, when it comes to reactions, though, I want to ask you this: What about your parents? Right? What was your parents' reaction <laughs> to you wind up going to court for this thing? Because you know they know, they obviously know you sell dolls, right? They they know that yeah. part. But what was their reaction from the initial charge? All the way up leading to bam, our son won. Um well on my mother's side, my mother's very typical in terms of being a normie and a female. Mm -hmm. And females always tend to view everything as there's us and there's them. That and that's irrespective of right and wrong. That doesn't matter. There's just us and them. Mm -hmm. So she would just say things, well, I, I hope the very best for you, son. I'll keep the prayer mats out for you. And that's, that's her usual line. And then when I called her up to say, oh, yeah, we had the court case today. And she was like, so how'd it go? It, obviously expecting a loss. And I was like, no, I won. She was like, yay. All of that sort of thing. Now, my dad, when I initially was telling him the whole rationale behind the whole court case, and I was saying, well, one of the things we're going to try and do is say to the court that I was the importer of the doll, which I was. Therefore, I should be the one breaking the law. So then it can all be directed to me. I could potentially have caught, uh, claimed on my business insurance, which would have helped with that. But my dad kind of looked at me and said, well, that means the police will come after you, right? And, you know, you always kind of like look up towards your parents somewhat. I was looking at my dad in a new light and there, thinking, as an honorable guy, could you let somebody else take the rap for you? Because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And he was obviously like, you know, quite happy for that shit to happen. I mean, he was, you know, happy for me like uh, when I won and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that, that was the only question mark initially when it was put together, which, which I thought, I thought you were better than that, father. No, a lot of people, self-preservation becomes their thing. I don't know if you've noticed this, Phil, uh, as people get older, they seem to really prioritize that, right? Because like when you're younger, you'll take the you'll take the fall for a friend. Guys will. I mean, mm -hmm. you've seen this, right? You you just look at someone wrong, and a guy is willing to fight someone else because of you know perceived disrespect toward their friend. All of a sudden, people get older, especially if they have a family, and it's almost like it's like they lose that that essence, right? They're just kind of like they, they they're like I don't want to ruffle feathers. You know what I mean? I don't, mm. you know, if, if I have to throw someone under the bus, you know, hey, it is what it is, but I'm okay. You know, you, you kind of get that sense as people get older, they seem to be much more self-centered in that regard, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've not necessarily understood that, but perhaps because I don't have a family, but like, you know, like guys who have families, I understand, oh, I, I've got a family to feed, but these same guys usually have a big package of life insurance. So if anything does happen to them, the family's taken care of. I wonder so, too. Because, Drex, I, I alluded to this uh, in the text you were referring to, but I wonder if at a point you get to an age where it's like, I have fought so many pointless battles. I can see that. Well, yeah, you just stop caring. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like, okay, like, yeah, the only battle that you care about is the battle for you to just keep living whatever lifestyle you're living right now. You see what I'm saying? Like, hey, I'm... I'm living in a decent house. I got my, my direct TV. I'm watching football or I'm doing what, like whatever th their level is, right? It doesn't matter if yep. they're a millionaire, a regular guy, what, whatever their level is. They just want to preserve their level because in their mind, they fought enough battles. Well, and I see people who've won and they still end up losing, right? Uh, like Kyle Rittenhouse's life was over, right? Even though he mm -hmm. won, his life's over. They had to leave state. Leave his yeah, family to behind. Change his life I, I'm not lying. I, I, I'm not lying when I say this. I I meant to put this in the Discord. I I need to find out if Kyle Rittenhouse was in my state, and I can even give an exact date. I'll have to go check my pictures. Uh, I went to go get my mom a salad from a, a new place called Crisp and Green, and I'm not joking. This guy, when I tell you this guy looked like a, a Kyle Rittenhouse doppelganger, you, you ever look at somebody you go like this, the f like, huh? Yeah. I'm talking. I'm not joking. If I can get an exact date when I check it, I'm going to see if anyone like follows him on some media thing. If he has like any kind of like a, cause you know, when people are on, on social media, they're like tie, you know, they're like, like location stuff. Like, Oh, I'm in Minnesota for the weekend. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Mall like, of America or whatever. Yeah. I'm visiting Mall of, like, I'm not joking, man. If it, I am like 90% sure that like I said, either it's him 
Or it's a dude who looks, I don't know his height. That's the only thing about Kyle I don't know. I don't think he's that tall. But this guy, like, in the face, I'm talking, e- like, I should have taken a picture. It was eerily similar. Yeah. Yeah, it, that was crazy. But I remember or, looking like, huh. Or even uh, Johnny Depp, right? Big yeah. win. And then they leak all the unsealed documents, and now he looks like a... And then, of course, they're going to go into the appeals process. So even yep. when you win... It's only temporary. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Yeah, it, yeah. Sometimes wins are kind of temporary, uh, which is unfortunate. But but his win is um, similar to mine, though, in that like most guys, you know, when it's he said, she says in a sort of breakup scenario or DV scenario, everyone takes her side. But he broke the back of that one, and people are starting to believe a him now over a her. So I'd say like a sort of like a, a new sort of precedent in the idea, which is like like in my case, like there's been there's been no doll wins ever, and everyone never. like in yeah, the doll never. community has been like congratulating me and saying Phil, this is going to change everything. So Phil, are they going to write you into some legal textbooks? Like that would be okay, great, uh, actually. Tell, yeah, tell us like what, what it would what would it feel like if someone brought you a legal textbook. You know about customs and international and whatnot, I'd, and it's I'd just only like be, precedent. <laughs> I'd, I'd only be indirectly mentioned because um, the case is HMRC versus the customer. I'd give you his name, but he hasn't given me permission yet. But technically, oh, okay. that'll that'll be written in some public domain area if somebody wanted to find it out. Yeah, yeah, I think that's wild. Just because you know, Phil, we we have these wins and. In the like you said, the Johnny Depp case where you can win, and you wind up getting drugged back to court, which always sucks because it's just more time. Although in this, in that case, you know, uh, you're dealing with another person who's now broke. Uh, I doubt anything's going to come of that. Although public perception can always keep money out of your hands. But I do want to ask you this, Phil. So you're in this case fighting, and this is something I thought about a lot when I was in court. Phil, what about like in terms of, like what skills did you pick up or hardships that you went through in your life? Uh, that I think, you know, let's say that best prepared you for this trial? Um, I I suppose having been around the block a few times and dealt with sort of like C-level executives who can be a bit dick-like when you deal with them, to just being able to manage to maintain a level of confidence and not be shaken by people. Because, like, you know, you're in the stand, you're getting shaken down like by the um, like very intelligent, well-spoken opposition uh, lawyers and stuff, and they, they'll do their best to make you look incompetent, unintelligent, or just, like, ignorant. Um, I mean, I've had that with C-level executives before, um, where they're just trying to, you know, make you look silly because you're always visiting the our financial institution and I'm the big man. Mm-hmm. Um, so I developed a skill to be able to deal with that without making you know, throwing the stupidity back at them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helped me on the stand because when they put the customer on the stand, he was kind of one step away from being really belligerent and I was getting a bit worried. I thought, oh, shit, can we actually talk like this? Mm-hmm. But apparently the bar- barrister said, you did really well, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean if you consider, to, they're lying the about us. Right? So, yeah. um, you, you, I mean, he wasn't shouting at them or anything like that, but it's just like, you, you know, when somebody accuses you of something and you like kind of pull a face and go, no, that's not yeah. how it is. Passion. You, wouldn't you expect want to show them. a little bit of passion. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you that, ru- that, you're trying to ruin my life here. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. You know, that doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, you know, Phil, over in your, uh, over in your land, you know, I always talk about that kid from Scotland, right, who got hit with – and he served time. And uh, come to find out he had 40,000 texts that prove he did not grape the chick who accused him mm. of rape, right? And yeah, yeah. what people don't understand – and this happened in the Kavanaugh case because I remember how the media portrayed it. They basically said Kavanaugh was guilty because of his reactions, right? And yet they never acknowledged the flip side of that coin, which is when you're being accused of something, that's why you have this – impassioned you know uh you know angered reaction right because someone's accusing you of something that, that if you know in your heart you didn't do you know t- to this day uh if you mention desiree washington's name to mike tyson he just goes off you know because he's falsely imp- he's falsely accused and convicted and he just goes off and people are like oh, I don't know, why can't mike let it go i do because it, it speaks to the very core of who you are as a man so when someone's sitting here lobbying these allegations at you yeah it is it's very personal you know and it's kind of unfortunate, but 
when it happens, Phil, you, you kind of take it on the chin because like you said, you know, everything that you had been through in your life that led up to that moment, you were like, yeah, like you said, you have to have that air of confidence. Cause I went through it because I had people telling me to cook. You know what I'm saying? I, so I know oh, yeah. exactly what you mean. Like, you know, just take the deal, Phil. Don't ruffle any feathers, Phil. Don't be like that. Hey, make sure you do this to make yourself look weaker. And I'm like, look, dude, I, I like I said, I was literally born without the cuck gene. Like when someone's like, you're mm. we just need you to cuck this one time. Like, come on, you can't give but, me but this it's one. That, it's that whole Nietzsche uh, slave mentality, isn't it? Yep. Take one for the team. It'll you know, be good, good for everyone else. Yep. Just, just go ahead and do it. Now, now, Phil, I want to ask you this, though. When you do get that win, we talk about emotions and being impassioned as you get accused. What about the elation you felt? Walk us through from the, the judgment to, you know, you're sitting down with us right now. Like, walk us through that elation that you went through. Well, we've, we've kind of all done, you know, the, the various sides that had their uh, examinations, cross examinations. They put forth uh, their case and stuff. And it was getting to about just prior to 2 p.m. So the magistrate said, like, we'll have like a 45 minute break to get something to eat. We'll mm-hmm. come back and I'll make my judgment. And uh, so I just kind of put it out in my mind. And so I had lunch, came back and a good 30 minutes of um, him reading out like from his notes and stuff, like breaking everything down into little, oh, little micro always, points. They always do that. It pisses me off so much. And the thing was, I mean, like I'm, I'm watching and because on the previous case, we tried to get everything thrown out because everything was just like uh, an absolute joke and it didn't go our way. So I was thinking that, like this judge is not on our side. So we really had to try hard. And as he starts reading stuff out, I'm going, okay, that went our way. And I, I, I'm expecting there's going to be like so many this way, so many that way. And it's going to have to be like almost like a boxing match in terms of points. Mm-hmm. You need to get the, the net, um, the, the greater percentage. And it just went, that's ours. That's ours. That's ours. Mm-hmm. And I'm so, I had to cover him like my face like this because I'm like grinning like an absolute bastard. I'm going, we're going to win this. Oh, shit. We're going to win this well. And because like I had like the, um, the border force officer who actually like seized the doll was within about like four feet from me. So I, I didn't want to be like grinning like an idiot in front of him. But like I, I knew 20 minutes into this 30 minute um, statement from the magistrate, like this was a done deal. I think they got it like maybe one point that perhaps maybe you could perhaps under certain circumstances consider this a child. But then the pediatrician said most of the time that it would be a mature female. So I was like, well, that, overall, that, even that points in that win. And he just went through and he said, so, and of course, I, I'm going to designate this as not obscene and therefore ordinarily would be released back to the customer. So we're going to have to start to deal with some costs for the customer and reparations for destroying the doll. Blah de blah de blah de blah. Wow. How, Not, so what did your what did your attorney say when all this happened? When you guys are so when you guys are done, uh, what, what well, did you well guys this, this had been requested because of course after they had destroyed the doll on the last hearing, um, we said, well, you know this is going to cost you money. This was my uh, attorney going to theirs and said, mm-hmm. either way, you destroyed something that you're not supposed to destroy. So strictly speaking, we could get you, even if we lost the case, we could get you to pay for another doll to have it imported in just so you could destroy it again. So either way, it's going to cost you. You might as well just give us the money. Hmm. But so now now they're just going to have to pay up for that. I can see that. Now, when when you, you get the win, you're looking at it uh, uh, from a, from a you know, much, much uh, grander perspective. What do you think that this is going, you know, do you think there should be more like visibility, right? And, or advocacy for dolls in terms of like, you know, there's levels to this, right? There's the manufacturer, mm-hmm. there's the owners, there's the consumers, right? Like you know, there's levels to the, like the doll, let's say the doll industry, right? Yeah. Do you think a win, like you're kind of going to what, what Tim just said, do you think your win can kind of be like a, like a, like a watershed moment to kind of shift, to it's, kind of show like that? Level it, of it's, it's showing everyone that we can win because everyone has, has always been beaten down and threatened by like a much greater authority than themselves. Mm-hmm. And I was always trying to corral everyone um, to become something, even if they were an invisible body as such, nobody would put their name to anything. If we, if we had something like a, um, like a subscription system, where everyone put like, you know, like a, a dollar a week away, mm-hmm. we would have a fund to actually fix it. But everyone always shied away from it. Because they thought, I would just be paying money into it and we're just going to lose and lose and yep. lose. It'd be a waste of time. But now that we've got the win, 
I believe I can get the vendors on board for a professional body. I think I might be able to get the manufacturers on board because they're pissed that their, their dolls aren't getting into the country. Yep. But now that I've bloodied the nose of the authority, we can push back. And if I get the manufacturers on board, there's a whole big stack of cash that I can use to start fighting back. And we could be as big as border force in terms of being able to take things to court. Yep. With that, that rolls on to the consumers and the owners. Um, is th they would then, th they've got more confidence. They just want to know what's legal. They're not asking yep. for much, I don't think. Uh, so no, no, they, they bring, want, they bring in the one community one. together. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think from a consumer aspect, if, if you look at this for a second, right? Consumers don't think the way, uh, like, okay, I'll give you an example. I remember when there was a court case. I can't remember which one. Uh, I think actually, I, I do remember. It was the uh, the guys who chased down. It was, it was the Arbery case or whatever. And I was explaining to Andrew what I believe was going to happen, right? Because every one of these cases I had called, I had called the uh, the, the Castile case, the Justine Demond case, and Nick wasn't always so sure. And I said, Nick, because see what what Andrew started saying is. I want to hear from civilians, not lawyers. Remember, law you start to realize how how wrong lawyers get it because their brain only thinks the lawyer way. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes to dolls mm -hmm. and the perceptions of dolls, imagine if you just sat in the echo chamber, right? Around all doll guys, that's why they have that view. Whereas when it comes to the consumer, Phil, all the consumer cares about is the one-to-one, -one, right? I have mm -hmm. the money. I want product X. If you tell a consumer, hey, psst, Drugs are illegal. You know, drug X, Y, Z is illegal. What do they do, Phil? They don't stop wanting it, right? They go like this. Mm. Okay, what channels do I need to go to to get the product? But when something is fully legal, they just go like this. Where can I buy it, right? Yeah. Where can I get it? Like, customers don't care about all, like, like the, the political stuff. If you can give someone their product, they all they want to do is exchange their resources for that product. And when you are providing, the, in this case, a product slash service, people don't I – mean, Phil – I think the irony is your your win, though I believe the way that it's going to reverberate is in terms of people who are just consumers going, I could throw in some cash to help that guy for more wins. Because like you said, Phil, to a guy who's going to buy a doll for $1,000, is, 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 is asking for like five bucks really a big deal? I've had a few people mention this already. Um, it's been said or asked, I suppose I should say, has Phil got a GoFundMe? And yep. this, this was after the last court case when I was asking for everything to be thrown out because, you know, they destroyed the doll and the, the evidence was dog shit. And I, I was saying to these people who were suggesting that I should get a GoFundMe, I said, well, it's a bit late in the day now. There's going to be one more court case and it's over one way or the other. I wouldn't have time to actually amass anything. But if I form this professional body, then people could then actually donate because then it, it is going to a good cause because there's going to be more of these. Yeah, I mean, I all I've done that I've, now that I've bloodied the nose of Border Force, they're going to get their shit together, and it's going to be a lot more difficult to to win against them. Oh yeah, we, they're going to adjust. They're, so so here's the thing, and this is the reason why when I said unintended winners and losers and consequences, I wouldn't put it beyond these people. And you know how these people think, Phil? They'll move the goalposts, right? They they don't take the L as man, we lost. They take it as this. Okay, why did we lose? Read the judgment, right? They'll read the judgment and then they'll adjust and say, okay, now dolls have to be, you know, and then they're going to make it something, you know, unattainable, right? And I do want to ask you this though, Phil. What I'm sure you've talked to TFM since your win. What was his take on, on this? I haven't spoken to him yet. Really? <laughs> no, we should get him to call in sometime, Drex. I know. That, I, 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 see, he's thinking. I'll hit him up. I'll hit him up. His take actually would be very interesting on this because it's like, you know, like I said, I don't like to say that he has a defeatist mindset in terms of how he views uh, taking on the system with this kind of stuff because he has more of like a a walk away right because like i have a natural born fighter instinct it's just what i do mm -hmm. uh some people have more flight like i said and neither one is this a right it just depends on the scenario right because uh, sometimes you can fight and you realize yeah you know what i kind of should have just you know left right mm -hmm. um but but phil there there needs to be a point where guys have that confidence to say no phil I am going to stand up for what I believe in. I do believe that this is right. I do believe I am. Uh, I have a right to have whatever this product is, right? Because let's face it, Phil, there was a point where if you asked people about legalized weed in America, they would have told you it's not going to happen. You see what I'm saying? Because guys mm -hmm. were getting like 80-year sentences. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Imagine at a time where you're getting an 80-year sentence. You're getting convicted, right? And you're sitting there and someone goes, hey, man, do you ever see weed being legal? He's like, bro, I just, I'm, I just got 80 years, right? In his mind, he can't see it happen. And then every, every everyone that he knows, because in his own world, he's seeing guys get busted in the same business, right? 
And so he's thinking like, dude, all it is is some grass that people smoke. Why do people care so much, right? And then yeah. you fast forward, if that guy, whether he dies or not, in a jail cell, if that guy fast forwards to the future, and he's going to be like, what? Phil, what? The, you're, you got weed shops? Oh, look, the government's selling, of course, right? The same government that, that enslaved you in a prison cell, right? Is now mm. selling the same product that, that they threw you in prison for, right? I'm just wondering, the, the, um, certainly in a, the case of the UK, given that this is quite topical, this idea, in, in order to make dolls fully legal to import as such, because they're legal anyway in the, in the UK, there's no real legislation as such against them, just the existence of them. Um, if there was a, let's say, a pandemic of an STI, so nobody was having sex. Mm-hmm. It was going to be like, you know, a death sentence within a week if you caught this thing and it was, you know, doing the rounds. So men need to have these dolls because if they don't, they all start fighting one another in the bars and st- every Friday and Saturday night, people are dying by the thousand every week. Then I could see that, you know, something like this could happen. So we need these dolls, but th- there would have to be a need. What do you think about doing something like that like almost having like a like a rallying cry like a like a stop like you know stop the violence fuck a doll right because hmm. you know well, crazier well, things the, have happened throughout history you see what i'm saying well this was one of my initial ideas before i started the doll house of putting it all together what i wanted was was a doll brothel mm-hmm. i was going to run that because my idea was you get like young guys who are like 25 and under and they'll go out for beers like on a Friday or Saturday night and they start showing off in front of the girls. And when there's girls involved, then, then there's violence and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But at the start of the night, you see the guys, they arrive in town. So you're right, come on, guys, 10 pounds each, bust a nut into one of my dolls. And I'll bet those guys would be as calm as you like and wouldn't be showing off in front of the girls as much. There would be no fights. I bet I could ask the police at the end of the weekend and say, how much violence was there? Well, down 70%. You know what's kind of funny? Do you know who would be pissed at you? Go on then. A lot of people, but besides the women, of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. The bar owners. The pub guys. Because remember, they're gonna, the men are going to spend less because they're not trying to impress women. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, they're mm-hmm. not buying them drinks. They're not buying them drinks. Phil, think about it. Watch this. Phil, you go to the, you go to the pub with your buddies, right? Hmm. You go in there, but this is right after everybody busts a nut. So you and your four buddies all busting nuts. So it's five guys sitting at a table, right? And they're like this. <sighs> what a nice day. You see what I'm saying? Because, hmm. because you, you removed all of that, like that, 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 uh, you see what I'm saying? The beast, right? Hmm. The yeah. beast is gone. So if you saw trouble brewing, you'd be quicker to get out instead of get into it, right? If a girl was like, hey, you got to buy me a drink, you'd be like, no, really, we're good. We're just here talking, hanging out. You see what I'm saying? That need to, you know, get female validation would be gone because, like you said, after all these guys are busting up, they're good. They're good. Uh, now, are, are you talking historically? Because we're old enough to remember what it was like. Because it still shocks me, the, the occasions that I'll find myself out in town. And... Because you, what used to happen, you get little groups of like junior guys, there's four or five of you, and there'd be like a group of girls next to you. So, you, you know, you did a bit of flirting and stuff like that going on. Whereas now, it's almost like there's a big chasm in the middle, and the girls are over yep. here and the guys are over here. Yep. Almost like a school, like a uh, prom dance or something. Well, do you know what's kind of funny, though? Is, um, uh, and this is, I'm, I'm, I, should, I say funny, but it's actually kind of sad, is that things have gotten so destroyed and fractured and uh shamed between the genders that phil look, let's be honest like i said we're, we're talking about in, in, a, in a purely idealized hypothetical world right if you took away all of the 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 woke nonsense the court system me too blah 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 and you just said ladies let's let's ask you an honest question to the ladies don't you guys want to go you know don't you ladies want to go over there and talk to the guys they would tell you yes right they're like yeah we, mm. we want the guys because phil when the ladies dress up They've got to, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like, I've noticed the way that women dress has started to change. This, this was crazy. They dress sluttier at the gym than when they're out, like, like at a restaurant. Have you noticed something similar? Mm. You, you see what I'm saying? Because well, they're not getting the attention you, anymore. Like, you said before, the gym's the new pickup joint. The gym is the new, the, the, if you're a P, like I said, I don't watch PUA channels, but I'm sure they've probably remarked on that. Whereas like, if you want to pick up girls, you have a better chance at a gym than you do at a, at a pub or a bar. You see what I'm saying? Because, because how they are dressed and what they're looking for, a girl could be at a bar like this. I just want to, you know, just hang with my girls and have drinks. Right. So she, she, she may not be interested in similar. The guy could be saying the same thing, right? Like, I don't want to talk, 
but at ironically at a gym where you're supposed to be, you know, like I'm focused on these weights or on these ellipticals, mm-hmm. people are, are there's more advertised at the gym than anywhere. And I think, like you said, there, there's that chasm in in the center, right? The guys mm-hmm. are on one side, the girls on one side. There was a time, and you know this, Phil, where the it would have been you would have been hard pressed to separate the genders. You remember you remember this like the way oh, I gosh, do. Like, yeah, the, the guys guys, guys wouldn't want that and women wouldn't want that. They'd be like, no, dude, we're here to well have fun it, and talk to girls and see what's our up. Our generation, though, um, we would have it. We kind of grew up where like the girls had it, so the boys chased it, right? That kind of idea. That was the dynamic that was going on. So the, the mm-hmm. guy had to do the approach and you know, do all the peacocking and showing off and stuff yep. like that. But if you go back. Perhaps to it might even be slightly pre my grandparents' era. You had like a very proper society in mm-hmm. England, but the girl would deliberately she would choose a guy and say, "Oh, I like him." She'd get the handkerchief out and then she would drop it and then just keep walking, and this guy would like see the opportunity, scoop up the handkerchiefs. Madam, I believe you you dropped this, so she made the first move. Yep. Yeah. So well, here's the thing: she made the first thing. move in the most female way possible, right? Which is not direct, mm-hmm. indirect. Yeah. And this is what's kind of sad. This is this is the reason why I love talking to guys like you, especially because you know your culture is slightly different being in the UK. And when you talk about you know your parents' generation and stuff, Phil, things have gotten so bad that people forget the the flirtation and like the indirect versus the direct communication between men and women was kind of part of like the charm, right? Because you know you talk to grandparents and stuff, right? Hmm. How they met. This is long before the internet, right? How they met was not a ratchet manner. It, it was something as, like you said, as innocent as dropping a handkerchief. Hey, you know, madam, I, you know, I thought you, you dropped this, right? And then they start to have like a little bit of banter, right? Hmm. They start talking a little more. And then here's the thing. Back then, that wasn't simping because society didn't punish the man for going over there. You see what I'm saying? Hmm. And likewise, the woman was pretty much safe that she had to worry about, you know, was this guy going to take her and, you know, take her against her will and harm her? You see what I'm saying? Like, you had natural boundaries on both sides, right? Now that things have gotten out of control, you're starting to realize, oh. So, so the beauty of it is that like your win is great for people out there who don't even want to participate in that. You know, let's face it, it's a game, right? They don't want to participate in the game anymore. But, you know, Phil, the I told you before that with the wife-like trailer, right? As people get further and further away from these kind of interactions that our grandparents and great-grandparents went through, what do you think is going to be coming out of all this, right? I mean, you, you win, great win for the dolls, right? The doll community, great win for men everywhere. Um, and, and as this pushes forward, what do you think about this as guys start going with the companions? Because, Phil, I've read some articles about you guys in the UK. I think you guys might be up in the ante in terms of numbers of surrogate fathers. I don't know if you've heard about that. I have not. Do you tell? Yeah, more, it's more and more guys like the UK and Australia, I believe, that are being like, "Yo, I want kids, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bypass the woman." That wife like trailer that I showed you a, a quick little bit of, of you know, whether it be sex or or the children route, guys are starting to move further, further away from women. Phil, I want your take on that. Well, it's just well, initially, it's just far too dangerous to uh, to get involved, isn't it? Because all she has to do is like you know, even ten years from now, twenty years from now, I wake up, oh, I. I'm not happy. And then the whole avalanche of problems just then begins. So I, I suppose I can see if you're one of those that is, you do want kids or something of a family as such, then mm-hmm. like taking the Sandman route where it said that there's like a dollar f- a figure in, uh, involved in his head, which I think he said, you know, something like about 40,000 US to be able to pay somebody from I don't know, South America or Southeast Asia to actually like, you know, bear the child and then just like, you know, disappear into the sunset mm-hmm. on her own. I kind of get it. Um, although I, c- I could imagine certainly in the UK, there would be rules against that. Like if you left the country and then suddenly came back with a baby, I, w- I would imagine that. Yeah. They, they wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Which is funny because if, if it was a woman, they would be okay. Right. They'd be like, oh, that's fine. Yo, oh, absolutely. Oh, Hollywood I mean, celebrities do it all the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, Two Madonna. gay guys. That's fine. Yeah. It, Oh man, it's so that part's gotten crazy. I just did a quick search. Uh, there's an outfit out of the UK called Brilliant Beginnings. Yep, that advertises surrogacy for single dads. Apparently, there was a law that had to be changed in 2019 to allow for this. Yep. Oh, uh, that's yeah. Someone just did a video I, on I, that. The, I always thought it was illegal. Single parents, yeah. Uh, yeah um, ch- 
Yeah, this company helped change UK law to allow single parents to apply for parental orders in 2019. Uh, Phil, do you know what that is, a parental order? No? Uh, not, not I, a I, I, man, assume, so. I assume it's to the license to have a kid, essentially. Um, I, I would assume so. Yeah. And we were the first UK surrogacy agency to work with single dads. And then there's some a bunch of FAQs. Um, should I stay in the UK or go overseas? And it actually... Um, yeah. Single dads in the US or Canada. Interesting. Yeah, I don't even know what the laws are for Canada or the US for that stuff. Because that's the thing, Drex, is like the single dad is the most oppressed group when it comes to bearing children. Oh, man. You, the amount of like, hurdles you've got. Yeah. Like I said, you want a surrogate. If you want to, well, hell, prime example a single dad goes to the park with his child and starts taking pictures. Uh oh. Huh. Phil, do you know what do you know what kind of trouble you can get into as a single dad? Like like your kids playing around and, and God forbid there's like other kids, right? And you go and you pull out your phone and go like this, like, oh there, you know, you are you're you're living the moment, well, right? You're trying you, to you capture can, a moment. You can get into trouble with the police even without taking the photo. Yeah, the, the, just it just happens, physically being there. Just having them the on UK. your phone. No, 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 well, no, just existing. No, 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 not, yeah. no just 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 sitting there at a park near children. Yeah. Well, there was a, a father, um, was taking his daughter to, let's just say it's Comic-Con, just for an example. And they got to the hotel. There was only like one room left. So like they're in the same room. Um, the girl behind the reception desk called the police on him. Must have been a pedophile. And oh. that actually got some news uh, uh, exposure. Oh, no. E even though they have the same last name. Yeah. Even though it's a father-daughter, it's... Yeah, because uh, so when... Um... When my daughter was younger, of course, uh, I mean, even to this day, you know, we always travel together, right? And back then, uh, I, th I don't recall maybe a couple of times where we had separate beds, but usually my daughter and I slept in the same bed, right? Cause with kids, as you know, Phil, uh, especially girls, they tend to sleep with their dad for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm. unless you like force yeah. them to, you know, like, they, go, you can go ask any parent. And, and that's a that's a topic, right? Like, how long until the kid, like, you know, like, wanted to sleep on their own? I don't well, my think my sisters daughter... did that. Yeah, yeah, my sisters did that with my stepdad. Yep. And, and my stepdad actually used to sleep on a couch all the time. It was more... You you yep. and... I do that. You and Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the couch. It's Cat's couch. Yeah, yeah. The couch. Like, so so my daughter is a couch fan, too. To this day, Phil, I will ask her, like, you want, you want to go upstairs? Because you know, she has her own bedroom, right? She will willingly choose the couch because she's been doing that since she was a kid, right? She's like... Either so, so when she was a really young kid, right? If she passed out on the couch, and if at any point she woke up and I was upstairs in bed, she would follow me up and then jump in the bed with me, right? But if she stayed asleep, she would just stay asleep on the couch. You see what I'm saying? She preferred the couch. And, and I look at this because it's like there are so many things uh, on a societal level that need to be changed. And it's like, Phil. You're, this is the reason why I always give you so much credit when, when I'm out in the battle, I'll be on someone else's show, I always shut you out because I'm like, I don't know how much I trust people when they don't have skin in the game. And I think your face is the first skin that you can truly have in the game. You see what I'm saying? Showing your face matters to me. When someone's talking about, yeah, Phil, I'm X, Y, and Z. I'm anti this or I'm pro that. It's like, but are you though? Because how much skin do you have in the game? Because there's no consequence from hiding with a, with an avatar and just using your mouth, right? Unless someone can, unless someone that you grew up with hears your voice and goes, oh, I think I know who this is. You, you see what I'm saying? Or puts pieces together. But like for, for all, uh, intents and purposes, the world at large does not know who you are until you show your face. Uh, and absolutely. I think the moment, you, the moment you show your face, cause Phil, let's face it. Let's say you lost, right? Let's say you lost and you face further prosecution. Someone, you know, you, you know, uh, they would love to show your face in the, in the, in the papers and, and on, online, right? This mm. is the creep that lost. He was trying to transport doll. You see what I'm saying? They would, they would, they would, uh, uh, they, they would blow it out of proportion, right? They would sensationalize it. People could look at you, Phil, and go like this. Is that the doll guy? In the same way they say that about Kyle Rittenhouse. Tim, his face was plastered everywhere. Just like George Floyd. If, if a guy, okay, let's just say George Floyd lived, right? If George Floyd lives and he, you know, he won a case against the the MPD because of, uh, you know, police brutality, right? Yeah. Anywhere he walks, is that George Floyd? Because his face is so synonymous with whatever his case was. He probably know? gets struck by lightning. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I never heard about that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the 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 George Floyd mural. The mural. Now, yeah. now, Phil, I want to ask you this: uh, What would be your advice for anyone out there, uh, especially with men? 
taking on the system and the powers that be? Um, if there's anyone who has done this to you before, speak to them at great length. Learn as much as you possibly can from them. Um, I mean, I had incompetence on my side with regards to border force. So I was fortunate in that respect. If they'd had their like air game on, I don't know if I'd have won it, mm -hmm. to be honest. So learn as much as you can from those who've done it before or have experience of this. Failing that, then you need the funds to get somebody who had, where you can pay for that experience um, to be able to take on the system. Because if it's legal, it, it's going to involve money. There's just no way around it. That's the thing. Always involves money, which is, which is funny because when it comes to women, they have, and this is what people don't understand. They have so much privilege. They have all of these, like, like, uh, fight. First of all, the government doesn't really come after women for, because they're, they're government informants. The way the government yeah. sees women, they're government assets. I shouldn't say informants. They're assets and informants. There are plenty of programs. You ever notice that, Phil? For like all these women advocacy groups, there's nothing for men. Literally nothing. And we you, could make the argument that we're actually the, um, the oppressed half of the species now. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's not even, it's not even a debate anymore. And it's crazy to think about that because like, the amount of times that guys wind up in court, it's like you have one gender just taking L after L after L. It's like, and, and you're looking around going, there's no groups. There's no nothing. Of course there's not, right? Of course there's no, the, 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 there's not going to be a government group. There are, there are groups out there who do help men, like, you know, wrongful convictions, blah, 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 right? Phil, they can only take a handful of cases in a year because the, the funding is so small, right? Yeah. When it comes to women, it's like, oh, no, in any case that, that women say that they're being wrong, we're going to, we're going to go in there and fight for them and then we're going to change the law, right? Yeah. Yeah, overnight, the law, I mean, you, you heard. And we're going to do it with somebody else's money. In, we're in this country, money. they'll do it with taxpayers' money in the UK. Same and, that's as basic, and we all know that comes out of men's pockets. Yeah, men are the net taxpayers, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, you're paying tax, but you get nothing out of it. Yeah. Now, Phil, any last words that you want to have about your case and about uh, where people can find you, dolls in general, whatever you're about? <laughs> Um, well, I'll, I'll probably be making a, a bit of a splash within the community. So, like, if you're around uh, the Dollhouse Discord server, or if you're in Do um, Doll Forum, or UK Love Doll Forums, you'll probably find people talking about me on what I'm likely to do. But um, just harking back to something that you were talking about before, pros and cons of uh, the case. Yeah, I, I've had the win. It's good. All right, I didn't get the costs. That would have been a great boon, but um, I, I'm, I'm not going to cry a tear over not getting the costs. But the scrutiny I'm going to get from Border Force now, so I've got to be whiter than white going forwards. Well, so, actually, Phil, no. You need to be browner than brown. You need to go get... Um, Masculine go ahead. presenting transgender lesbian. You, well, you got to be a trans lesbian, but I'm trying to think. you got to convert to Islam. Also disabled. Um, you like gotta the, be disabled, uh, Phil. Yeah, go, Phil. go chop an arm off right now, Phil. Phil, just just do like like Phil. I want I want to see you go through the whole spiel. You know, the, uh, Tim, did you see that Stephen Crowder trolled and pretended to be like like basically like masqueraded and larped as like a professor or like some expert in like gender studies stuff and like and was allowed to be a speaker at like this major conference. You see that? <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, Phil. I that video. You can do the same thing. This is no lie. You could literally, Phil, go in. Have the people brown you up, right? Go ahead and, and, and put a turban on, right? Hop in a wheelchair and be like, like I said, Phil, let's just say, you know, you got a bad hip or something. A doctor says you have to, you know, you got to be in a wheelchair and, and see if you can try to get through with the doll. I'm like, yeah, this is my, this is my emotional support companion, right? I have to fly on the plane with this, with this lover doll, right? And just see if it works. See if, if the only difference between your, and, and Phil, it'd be beautiful if it was, this, if it was literally the exact same doll. See if there's a difference between a, a, a white guy trying to travel with this versus a brown, mm. uh, brown skinned, disabled, trans lesbian trying to do that it. That just reminded me something that was brought up. Um, something that the prosecution were trying to make a big point of was that the fact that Doll didn't have any pubic hair. Oh. Now, and they even admitted to when my barrister kind of said, so if the Doll had pubic hair, this would have had a bearing on this case. And said, yeah, it would have altered what, how likely that this would have been uh -oh. with the child Doll. Now, I actually sell the pubic hair Merkins that you can put put on and take off. So I can just say at the factory level, just put one on. Oh, I mean, shit, I could go full German, put one under each um, in, in each armpit. <laughs> armpit? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes! Phil! Slap one right on the chest. Phil, did, did your lawyer talk to you about this afterwards? Like, like, Phil, why don't you just start doing that? Like, if that's all it takes to get through, 
I don't think well, it has a bearing. It, it won't necessarily yeah. definitively yeah. said yeah. it's going to be Man, a doll, but it will help. Way. From now on, when you get a doll from Dollhouseville and you are out of the country, you're not in England, expect to go full bush. We got to push this through, Phil. <laughs> push for the bush, right? Push for the there bush, bush for the push. You see what I'm saying? Make yeah. that a, make that a t-shirt. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Get them through, man. Phil, I, like I said, I always love having you on because like I said, I feel I love hearing guys win. Like, like I said, it, it's cathartic for me because, like I said, Phil, I was in court for almost two years, right? And I had to deal with so much nonsense. And, you know, I don't know what it's like over there in the UK, but for me, Phil, I can recall a time where every time, I'm not joking, it seemed like every time I went to the mailbox, I had mail from the court. And it, I'm, I'm not lying, man. Like, if you guys can remember what it's like to be uh, a child or a teenager, and you got like something from the school. You ever feel you you had anxiety, right? Even if you were a good kid, which I was not, that's why I was extra nervous. But let's just say you were a model a model student, you were a good kid. You still got nervous because something came from the school, right? Like, oh shit, what, mm. what oh, yeah. the hell could it be? Oh, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? Imagine that, but like basically almost day, like every other day. Like I'm talking it, every time I went to that that mailbox, Phil, something from the court, something from the court, something from the court. I'm thinking, gee, like, does this stop? And, and when it was finally over, it, you know, there's a couple of like little trickle things, right? Like a final order, a couple other little, and then like it just kind of goes ghost until you get like, you know, a cola or something, right? So I remember thinking to myself, wow, I had to do all that fighting. And it's like, wow. I mean, like it, it, it's, it, it's why I feel so cathartic when I hear guys that, that went and took on the system. The powers that be are trying to do what, Phil? They're trying to dictate male sexuality. Male sex drive, male choice, right? Remember, we always say my body, my choice. They want to dictate where your your resources go, right? Because it feel if you were spending all your money on women, no problem. They just don't want you spending it on women that can get men sex without relationships, which is why they always go after uh, trafficking. A yeah. lot of times, there there are a lot of girls out there feel they want to go go wherever. You see what I'm saying? They're not being taken against their will. A lot of these girls are trying to go somewhere else. Regardless of what their home life is like, I said, I'm, I'm not sitting there advocating for that. I'm just saying the ones that do it willingly, right? Who get into certain lifestyles willingly, it, it is what it is. Like, like I said, they don't, and Phil, you know this. Why are they so against, uh, prostitution? Cause they, you and I both know, Phil, especially where we're at now with men and women. Well, they blow it hot ends and cold on pr prostitution because at one point, oh, oh, no, no, this is women being like forced into sex work. And then all of a sudden, sex work is real work. When, especially when there's a doll brothel or dolls are being pushed out in, out in Amsterdam and the girls are losing money. It's like, oh, all right, here we go. Well, which do you want? Pick one. You can't have both. Yep. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because, like I said, Phil, would you agree that your your biggest takeaway from this case is like you just want a gold standard, right? You want someone yeah. to say, hey, all right, all right, look, from, like on both sides, right, from the government side, from the, the doll side, you want to be able to go like this. Okay, guys, we now agree that this is what is considered child doll or what not what isn't, right? This is exactly what you, what you need. So as long as you're within these parameters, it's okay. It's fair game. And yet I think what it sounds like what your biggest frustration was that they're constantly trying to move the goalposts, right? Like they couldn't get you on something, so they had to try to like like twist another way. You see what I'm saying? Well, Phil, do I you mean, mean the, this? Yeah, well, I mean, it was just arbitrarily on height at first, which I thought I don't agree with, but I can work with it. And then they changed it. Now, then I found out over time they were taking into uh, more criteria into account, which is better, but it makes it a lot more difficult to know if your doll is actually going to be considered childlike or not. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, because like an arbitrary height, you know, if you're half an inch above that, then you're good, right? Yep. But, I mean, even though I've got this one, this means Akira is legal to actually go in the UK. But the another doll, let's say the Ariel doll, I don't know. They might look dimly on that. I mean, I'm going to try and get them to sit down and so we can actually have a conversation about this. Otherwise, we're going to be in and out of court all the time. But, you know, they don't care. They've got like a legal team that will just take that one on. But, but Phil, I still say this is why it's so important to me. You don't have to listen. The government's going to be the government, right? They're going to do what they're going to do, mm. especially because they have unlimited budget. It's not them that's the issue. It's the public. Because watch this, Phil. What happens when the public pushes the government to go like this? No, 
Dolls are just dolls, just like any other sex toy that a woman can buy at a store. So if a guy wants to get whatever, hey, that that's him. He's not bothering. Because remember, Phil, you can let the feminists get on board by going like this. Hey, Lisa, men aren't raping women now, right? They aren't raping them. You, you see what I'm saying? Oh, you need well, the public to be on your side. Remember, because the government's going to be the government. Like I said, they want control. It's difficult, though, because um, nobody wants to put their name or their face uh, out in the public. That's the problem. You know, I just... Feel that you know how that deeply affects me because like I, said, I, I, I know I mean I feel the same way as you. Uh, I mean, when I'm I tired of everybody trying terms. to be a. I, I'm tired of, of keyboard advocates. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah, okay. I believe Click, clicking a like having, or a dislike. Yeah, clicking a like help. or like don't get me wrong. If, if if there's legitimate reason why you can't for a reason, but like but like you're supported financially, I think that's perfectly fine. Like if a guy says, "Hey Phil, I can't have my face for whatever reason, but what I can do to have skin in the game is like because money is skin in the game, right? Anytime you invest hmm. your your resources. You have invested, but but a like is not that big of an investment. You see what I'm saying? Click and like or a, a, a fist bump emoji, right? Phil, I support you, bro. Like, yeah, bro, but you know what's a better thoughts support? Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, thoughts and prayers, <laughs> Phil. Here's the emoji. The the best thing you can do is, like I said, physically, you know, let, let's be honest, Phil. The only thing bigger than money is 500,000 Londoners out there marching in front of a courthouse on your, but you, you see what I'm saying? Because the physical presence is number one, right? The next best thing is the monetary presence, right? You saw what happened with Eric July, Tim. Mm -hmm. He raised two point something million dollars in. Oh, I think in, it's four. I think is it's it four, four now? Yeah, yeah. Now it is. I'm saying when when, it, when the story first broke, it was like oh, yeah. like was it one point seven in like what, like a day or something? Yeah. You see what I'm saying, like, Phil? It, do you see what the the, the 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 ripple effect that caused? You see what I'm saying? Because hmm. here's here's a, he's a, he's just a guy, right? Shout out to Eric July, by the way. For once again, taking on the system, right? Conventional wisdom. When you do that, though, everyone takes notice. And that's what I want people to get across from your story, mine, any guy who's ever been to court, taking on the powers that be, because fuck them, uh, all of them. They're all guilty. Uh, but yeah, Phil, any last word? Um, hashtag just get a doll. That's why I love <laughs> Phil. Of course. <laughs> uh, Koopa has offered to run a Matsuri doll booth oh, next man, anime Koopa. Matsuri <laughs> but Koopa is the ultimate uh, he's not just a doll after like, like he's, he's he's just had like his own like sales uh, video on YouTube just like you like because you know there's always like the suggestions you're like what the hell is this suggestion so you click on it and it's Koopa with the doll just sitting there <laughs> and he's going ahead and selling you on it man that's why we shout out to our man is Koopa. he going to do it with the head or the head off <laughs> oh, he might he but, might have a both. He might yeah, go ahead yeah. and do like, like it starts with the head on, but then as he gets a little more frisky in the night, just, ah, and then like, like there's like a stop, like it, it can just zoom in on his face, like you think I'm gonna stop going, and then it just zooms back <laughs> in, and he just starts going with no head. <laughs> hey Phil, when uh, whenever you get a chance, uh, get a copy of the transcript from your day in court, please. Okay, we'd love to pass that on to Ricada. I'm sure he'd do a show on that. Yeah, that could be fun. Oh, and if you want to like people. blank out names or whatever, uh, you know that's. Well, well whatever. I'll speak to the I'll speak to the customer. I, th I think you'll be all right with this. Yeah, I mean, people can look it up, but you don't have to make it that easy, right? We can just hmm. blank out the names. But um, because honestly, I think it would be. Uh, how long has it been since you've been on Ricada's show? Oh, it's been a while now. Yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun to have him go through that, or maybe we'll bring Nick over here, one or the other. Okay. Uh, Andrew legal mindset. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Andrew. I'm sure he'd have a he'd have a hoot with that. But uh looks like Anna's running late, Drexel. Uh oh. All all that fuss, all that fuss to get her moved up into the time slot. Now right? I'm like, late. oh god, we gotta yeah, <laughs> rearrange things. And look, this is the, the, the wildest thing, Phil, is that like it's not just cases like yours, it's all these these guys that constantly find themselves in court. And this is what I think is like the most disturbing. Any sane person looks at the reason a person is in court and they go like this. Why, are you just, why is this even a thing? You see what I'm saying? Like, why are we even doing this? Right? Because you said to yourself, oh, you thought they were going to throw it out for a reason. They don't. You heard about that guy who got sued for $10,000 because of the date? Did you hear about that? Oh, no. You didn't? Wh which one? Oh, no. It was recent. It was within like the last, uh, I would say, the last month. A dude got sued for ten grand by a German shepherd who went into court telling the judge what's what because she got ghosted. Like, like I guess they set up a date, he didn't show up or something for I can't remember where the reason was, and she sued him for ten grand. 
And Phil, if you said that to any like sane person, they'd be like, you can't do that, right? Like you can't, you can't be, you know, trying to, you, you talk to somebody on Tinder and you're like, yeah, I'm going to meet up with you and you get ghosted or whatever. You're like, yeah, I'm going to sue them for emotional distress. Like, does, no, does that go in both directions? Yeah, and that's and that's what people said. They're like, they're like be careful now, be careful because let's okay, Phil. Let's just say for the sake of argument, for the sake of argument, she wins. Hmm. Could you imagine if guys started going ahead and going to court, and then they the, the court tried to see? I've noticed. I, I heard about this. They try to use language. Our, I think RPM did a video on it. Shout out to RPM. He said when it comes to men, they call what men do to women ghosting. That's that's harmful, right? Ghosting is harmful. But when it comes to when women do this to men, they call it flaking. Right, <laughs> women flake on men. Right, that's not harmful though, Phil, because men's feelings don't matter. Right, yeah. But ghosting, you case. ghosted a woman. She had to get ready. She invested all of her time getting ready to look pretty for you, and you ghosted her. You're evil. I mean, I, c- I can deal with that. You know, the fact that like we're always going to be uh, judged as being the uh, the aggressor and mm-hmm. whatnot in in the relationship. But 10k for like ghosting a girl. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, shit could have happened, you know, where you couldn't have turned up. Now, you, if you're going to do that, I would remind the girls, it's going to cost me less than 10K to have you disappear. And that's when the law then gets changed. Yeah, it's over a bad day. Oh, legal, uh, legal attorney, everybody. Yeah. So, Phil, if you look at it right here, uh, hold up. Yeah. Yep. Why is my phone all funny? Yep. Woman sues for, yep, 10 grand. Ten thousand dollars over a bad date, a breakdown. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, stood her up. Yeah, yeah. So he stood her up. And anytime you see a German Shepherd wearing a blonde wig or something, you should already know what it is, man. <laughs> you should already. <laughs> Phil, there are certain things. Yeah, rude sister sues a man for ten grand for a bad date, and then this happened. Like, yeah, she went off on this judge in court, which that lets you know how how entitled they are, Phil. That they feel that they they can go in front of a judge and just and go off on the judge. She's like, no. And get away with it. I'm, yeah, I'm telling you, she was trying to explain to him what, what uh, perjury was. And the judge was trying to explain to her that's not perjury. You know, if a guy says he's going to be on a date with you and he, like, doesn't show for whatever reason, that's not perjury. But he lied to me. <laughs> and the judge just kind of sit there and, like, Phil, she was not held in contempt, which she should have been, right? Because if a dude goes in the court talking crazy to a judge, right? Phil, you have to watch the video. She's talking crazy to this guy. If a lawyer does that stuff, he gets. He doesn't say yeah, anyone else, but do you know there's always one group who gets to go in in, in court and just start talking. I will. I will say this. I will give one caveat. That does not happen unless if, when you have a female judge. You know, some women don't try that with female judges. You ever notice that? I mean, it's it, popping off, going crazy because like women I will. Don't have. I, I don't have a lot of experience of it, but I have seen girls like try to stand off in front of Judge Judy, and she she does not mm-hmm. suffer fools Zip, gladly. She, Here's the thing. If you want a court case to go against you in rapid speed as a woman, just have a female judge like like a, like a no nonsense judge like Judge Judy, bro. It's over. If you go in front of someone like Judge Judy, you start running your mouth as a woman. Eh, you just lost your case, just yeah, like judge, that. Judge Judy's a cultural icon. Like even yeah. I know who that is. Man, I'm telling you. If here's the thing, I've told this uh, Phil. I don't know if you know this. I just did a show with Andrew, right? And. There was a case that was sent by our girl, uh, Danielle sent it. And the, the teacher graped a boy and she is only going to serve 60 days in jail. Now that, that much. I, I know, right? I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, t- 10 years probation though. Cause you know, probation means nothing. We all know that. Now here's the problem though, Phil. The, the assistant district attorney was a female. Do you know what kind of time she was seeking? The max. She, so, okay. so let this sink in. The female attorney, the DA, was seeking the max penalty for this hideous, Ten years? great mess. No, no, she, it was, it was uh, 12 to 15. 12, oh, wow. 12 to 15. She, she was seeking the max penalty, right? Yeah. No, no. Let this sink in, Phil. Andrew and I, had we hadn't even read the article. We already knew the answer. Hey, Phil, who was the judge? If if she served yeah. sixty days, but but she was looking. Oh, at uh, t- uh, I mean, I don't know personally, but a it'd guy. be a guy. It's a male judge. It's a, a conservative judge. You guess. T- hey, let me guess. In Texas, I think it was. Of, of course. course, it was. It's always fucking Texas, I, dude. Phil, you can't make this up. Like I said, I have to. I need to look at the case and, and find out. Um, 
I should type in like a teacher. This is why I want the entire legal system to be automated because a computer yep. won't give thrift to women. Yep. Yeah. It's just, yeah. You did this. This is the time you get, right? There's like the, the mm. feds did mandatory minimums. Uh, I'm looking at this up. Teacher. Oh, you're going to have so many articles. Uh, all I have to do is teacher, uh, sex, student, then uh, 60 days. It'll, it um, should pop up. I'll send an email to TFM and see if he's available to come. Uh, yeah, well, of course it was. Week. Tom Ball, Texas. Look, a former choir teacher. Yep. Of course it's Texas. Marco Bodin. Yeah. I'm, Phil, this is the reason why I'm so against uh, when, when I talk to, to guys like Ty and stuff. I go, Ty, your state is done. I don't know where this this, this obsession with uh, – um, yeah, that's her. Basic Becky, right? Yeah, looks the type. Looks the type. Yep, a mugshot of former teacher Marka Bodine, right? Is so she she's in she's in Texas. Oh wait, hold on. Let's got. I is hope she, she married? is. They almost always are. They almost always are. I've noticed. Yep. That. Yep. Let me see. Let me look it up. <laughs> Assistant district attorney. Uh, oh no! Wait, wait. Hold on. My bad. Whoa, whoa. I got it way off. She asked the judge for a twenty to forty year sentence, which is the max. So the max sentence for for raping a child is twenty to forty, which she sought. And nope, sixty days. That's it. Oh, oh, Tomball is is thirty five miles northwest of Houston. So might even still Harris County. This is my issue, Phil. We keep putting out this narrative about, like I said, it, it's one of my biggest gripes about the the whole like you know the, this manosphere stuff. They always want to talk about how women bad, women bad. I'm like, but bro, who's really the the real culprit? It's the it, it's the conservative. The yeah, it's, worst it's the men who give women all of the uh, the authority. We, not, not the authority. They feel, here's the thing, it's one or the other. Either they give them authority or what else do they do? They recuse them of any accountability, right? It's one or the oh, other, yeah. right? Either they're saying women can do whatever they want in, in, in terms of like, like you know, they have unlimited power, right? You're like, wow, this is kind of terrible, man. The chicks are just me too and guys. Or it's the opposite. They go like this. She got busted. She did X, Y, and Z. This is a horrible crime, right? She She deleted her children or something. All right, it's time to go after her. And they're like, well, she was emotionally distressed. Because Phil, I don't know if you heard about this story. It was years ago. Florida International, FIU player. His girlfriend threw boiling water on him and didn't serve one day in jail. Jesus. No, I, I haven't heard it. That happened not a, lot a in the UK. day. Not even one day. Not even one day, Phil. Now, no, Phil, reverse it. Acid now, attacks. Scalding water. You poured it on a woman, Phil, your girlfriend or wife. You're done. Yeah. It's over. It's over. And, and, and that's the reason why, like I said, every time a guy takes on the, the system, he takes on the man, I'm happy. I'm happy when you do it. I, I'm, if, if TFM wants to take on YouTube, uh, I mean, TFM, shout out to you, but I mean, we all know you're done. I'm going to have to go ahead and smash Susan eventually. Um, <laughs> someone just told me he's on bit shoot now, though. But he's, uh, uh, Drax is working up the courage. It's been two years. He's working up oh, the courage man. to go smash Susan. Phil, that that horse face is real, man. <laughs> I mean, like Phil, like, every guy can like lower their standards for like a like a greater good or something. But I'm like, I see that horse. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, fuck. Uh, you know, you have to soul search before you do something, Phil. You ever you ever had that moment where you just kind of like, <laughs> like like whatever's yeah. about to happen is gonna be so horrible, but like, but it's gonna be good for the rest of my life. It's like uh, you're, you know, you're about to get chewed out by the boss, right? And you're just standing, holding the knob to his office, right? And you're just like, <sighs> "All right," and then go in. Yeah, the attitude. Let's just get this done. Let's just get it done. It, when, when you went to the principal's office in school, with. right? You, you went to the. You know, I think you guys for you guys, it's the headmaster, right? Yeah, yeah, the headmaster for you, principal for us, right? When you get ready to go through that whole process, Phil. You you prolong everything leading up, right? You, you don't just when, when you get you don't just walk right there as fast as possible. You like no, you you walk it. the green mile. Don't you, you walk the green mile. You think about it. You you plot in your head what could go, what could happen, what could be. And then at the end of all that, you're like, <sighs> and usually you still don't enter because like someone has to like walk by. Go, are you are you oh, going in? What geez. what do you need? And then they go in, right? What's, go, what's going on? Showed up. This is not random at all. I got to say what's up to Phil. Oh, Congratulations goodness. for beating the man, you know? Oh, good. Hold on one second. I got to use the bathroom. <laughs> now we're all good. I, I'm about to I'm about to take off here for a little bit. It was my birthday last weekend, but I'm taking a, like a, a, a 
vacation this weekend. But when I heard the news, Phil, I was like, oh, give me the link. I'm going to stop by and just, you know, just say what's up and say congrats. I mean, it's uh, it's always good to be out from under the eye of the fucking annoying government. <laughs> yeah. I mean, although I, I would imagine the scrutiny on of the government at me personally mm. might, might be fairly heavy for a while. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to have to be a good boy. You got to lay low. Yeah. 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 You know, don't uh, don't end up on any watch lists. You'll be fine. <laughs> so, as a, a, as a legal guy, then a, mm-hmm. a good idea to form a professional body of like fellow vendors and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. I would say. So yes. I, think, I think it's going to be easier to um, fight back against these sorts of things. And it's not just you. It's like this is multiple businesses. You can give aggregate numbers. Like we represent X businesses with X employees. We we produce X amount of revenue. Right. And as a mass, it's just going to be easier to represent that rather than you're just a, you're just a, you know, they'll be able to paint you as an individual, as a weird dude, rather than like, mm. this is an industry. This is a growing industry. This is something that's not going away and it's only getting bigger. Okay. Good stuff. Even if it's just a paper organization that, you know, is a kind of an expressing, an expressing of um, mutual support. Right. Yeah. Well, I would imagine if I put that together as well, um, rather than using a GoFundMe or something like that, it could be something that people could subscribe to, and I could give yeah. them actually good, good information as, as things as, as news breaks. Well, and, and like a newsletter. Correct, correct me if I'm hmm. wrong, but you know, accounting for different countries' legal systems, but generally speaking, if you're an advocacy organization, you can be a registered charity. Mm-hmm which means people can donate and they can get a tax receipt for that donation. Uh, and of course you as an organization have certain tax benefits too. Varies wildly country to country, but yeah, generally yes. Right. Generally. Yes. It's like if you're advocating some sort of political cause, which right. I think this is a political cause, Phil, what, what do you think? Well, po- political hmm. is the one where the political one is the more, that's more dicey than like if you're advocating, for example, um, something that is, for example, if you're advocating for a sector of the economy, yeah. Right. And you're like, this is the, the you know, like farmers. Right. They they go together. They band together. You see what the fuck they're doing in, in Netherlands right now. Yeah. Oh, um, well, that's how the mm. UFA started. Right. The United Farmers Association. You got it. You you got it. Right. So there um, you go. But yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there are some advantages to uh, forming up into an org. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of have to your mission statement would determine whether you're political or whether you're uh, advocacy for a social issue or a social cause. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mission statement, fuck the government. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, where can I write the check? <laughs> By the way, uh, hey, uh, Phil, how do you spell check in the UK? C-H-E-Q-U-E. Okay, yes. You spelled the same as Canada does. Yeah, the the uh, apostate way. It's all right. <laughs> of course. It's, it's very French. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's oh, a no, corrupt I... influence when they uh, boated over from Normandy. Yeah. No. God damn those Normans. Hey, that's how I got uh, that's how I got my last name. Uh, the because I have a there's a there's Don't a silent yourself, letter. Jim. Yeah, I know. There's a silent letter <laughs> in my name and it, it's a French silent letter. But and then of course well, you anglicize it and then you start pronouncing it again. So Well, Fr- French <laughs> silent letters make sense. They just all surrender, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, Gubin wants to. He really wants to do like a doll. No, honestly, we were talking about this next year. Like, I feel like you should cut. Like, I'm gonna definitely have a table for sure next year. And I feel like I feel like Phil should be there. I feel like Phil should, or somebody should have Phil's wares. Because, for example, Nick, he let um, a Joe Ball, so he didn't have a table, like sell on part of his table, right? Because there's times where you can't be there. You're running around. You're on a panel. And the tables are big, so like I don't, I wouldn't need all of the table, right? I'm happy to put Phil on half my table, and I'm sure somebody else is happy to put Phil <laughs> up there. That'd be fucking hilarious. I would love that. Well, you've got your uh, you've got your Austin uh, doll vendor, right? That's You're not, talking to Phil. Yeah. Oh, San Antonio. San Antonio. That's not terribly far from Houston, is it? No, no not that far. Well, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to walk it. <laughs> Probably not. I, I'm just wondering, though, if um, Phil Phil's going to be the next entity seized by uh, Revenue and Customs. <laughs> well, can, if he flies can, out of the country, 
No, I mean that's not they can't possibly have you on a on a red list. Can they? I mean I mean the allegation I've, was that he was trafficking child stuff, right? But they to put you on a red list, you need some sort of do you though? Does it need a conviction or would they would that be a no, person of it interest? Necessar- it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need a conviction, but I mean, you could try just, I mean, frankly, you could try just like a, like a short business. I would just do a test, like, you know, uh, you know, pop over to, I don't know, whatever yeah. other country. Amsterdam, open up yeah. your doll brothel in Amsterdam. Well, whatever. No, I mean, no, just make a short, you know, weekend trip, pop over to, you know, whatever, Amsterdam or Paris or something like to try to hop on a flight. And if they say anything, I mean, I guess outside the EU, it'd have to be outside the EU because then they'd really check, right? Because well, the EU, the Britain, Schengen, they're not going to Well, well I'm well, outside the EU. the EU. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot Brexit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm just waking up, guys. Sorry. I forgot about Brexit. <laughs> but, no, I, yeah. I, yeah, I do think that, uh, yeah. do you have any business in Amsterdam? Well, not so much, but I was going to um, plan a quick trip, or like a long weekend over there in September. There I was going to go. go during the summer, yeah. but the, the flights were like out of control. Oh, tell me. And, and so, everything's getting canceled too. So uh, I got a buddy my, who's flying out to uh, Heathrow, what? Ne- yeah, next week. And I mean, we're fully expecting that he'll be there three days after they intended. So my flight is in my flight. I'm actually leaving to the airport in a second, which is why I just want to pop on for a bit. But my flight is only, it's only an hour flight. It's like literally. Short air times just up, hops up, pops down. I took the same flight in winter, and mind you, that's low tourist season. But it literally cost me twenty dollars each way, so forty total. <laughs> oh. Now it's three hundred and sixty-one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just like this is this is inflation and fuel prices like ridiculous. The only thing I really see it in is travel costs. Oh. A- Andrew, the flights in Canada are the worst because we don't have the population. So we fly half empty airplanes all the time or just one flight between our two biggest cities per day. And they so, wonder why the Canadian economy is kind of fucked up, you know? Yeah, I mean, our economy is like everyone else's economy. No. Y- y- y'all's are fucked. <laughs> Y'all's are fucked. We're fucked too. Well, America. Yeah. Not, I mean, whatever. But America's fucked. Yeah. But for a lot of different reasons. Well, and they fired a bunch of our pilots for uh, not getting the uh, jab, right? So... And now they're like, "Oh, why are we canceling all these flights all of a sudden? This is this is. Uh, I have no clue how this happened." They it immediately might... tried to. They immediately tried to say the spin was Tim. Immediately they said, "Oh, it's storms and it it's unions. It has <laughs> nothing that. to do with the jab. It, it's nothing to do at all. And even though it's exactly when it's went into place, it's just storms. There's just oh. all of a sudden storms." And we had the exact same thing with. Uh, so uh, my city here has like an integrated nine one one system. So like all the bedroom communities were all on the same dispatch so uh you know we ran out of ambulances and we were in what what they call a code red here which means that you know you call 911 and say this guy like there's a kid on fire and we need an ambulance they're like sorry wait time is like 45 minutes that's Ugh. and they're like oh geez well wh- why do we not have enough paramedics oh yeah you fired 400 of them when uh when they wouldn't get the jab well, Br- Britain never did any of that shit, right, Phil? I mean, because they, they pretty much all the restrictions were lifted, so they didn't do that, did they? There was a big threat of doing this, like, if you weren't going to get the jab. There was, like, tens of thousands of people who were going to be made redundant from the NHS, but the, the government relented at the last moment because it was looking very unpopular politically. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to have the exact same thing we're having over here. Like, they're shutting down emergency rooms. Um, you can you can Google articles out of Toronto, like Sunnybrook Health Center is, uh, oh, we don't have enough staff, so the emergency room's just closed. Like, Drex, could you imagine showing up to a hospital, right? You, you, you put a nail into your chest or something, right? You got hit with a nail gun, and it just said, there's like a little closed sign on the emergency room, like Dude. a store. Well, we put together four, I mean, it was for Corona. Um, we had these Nightingale hospitals. Hastily constructed, but like could deal with thousands of people. Never but, used. They were just dismantled. Cost us like a, millions upon millions ooh. to actually put together. But like a field hospital, right? I, I'm, well, I mean, there's a couple of them that still exist, but they're like ghost um, hospitals. They're yeah. not being used. Weird. Yeah, because we had that plan here. Uh, our football stadium, there was a plan to turn it into like a massive field hospital. Uh, if we ever ran out of capacity in our, because in, in Canada, we only have like 
our hospitals are always at 80% capacity. Always. Like oh, it's so it's the socialized system, right? They mm-hmm. the government builds demand based on how many people are in the hospital, and we can't afford to build more capacity than the people we're treating. You know, because it's the government. They can't freaking So did they ever get to a hundred percent capacity? All in the, the time. height. Not and not in uh, Corona either. Just right, right. Even before Corona, they're getting to one hundred percent capacity, yeah. which which makes sense. A bad car sense. crash, a bad right. car crash on the uh, on on the interstate or the the, the Trans Canada Highway, a bad car crash would fill a hospital up for a month. What? It, yeah, yeah. They were already running their hospitals at capacity, so so using it as a yardstick of coronavirus means infinite powers forever. Because that number is never going to go down. It's never going to drop below the threshold that they set. They're setting their own, their own threshold. So, Drex, you remember when I went into the hospital, uh, you know, a year ago? Um, the hospital I was in, like they, as soon as they rotate someone out, a new person's in that bed immediately. There are no empty beds in recovery. And I was in ICU for a couple of nights, and the only other person there was someone who was di- actually dying of corona across the hall from me. You hear him. So they don't want Canadians to be healthy, literally, ever. I mean, I've, the government never wants anybody to be healthy, but especially in, in Canada, right? Well, and then you got the government with the monopoly on health care. Yep. So mm-hmm. what incentive, Drex, is there to actually make the system perform properly? Of course. Now, that begs the question, though. Why is it that every time I bump into Canadians, they always want to preach this whole universal health care garbage? Because they're all they're all programmed woke motherfuckers. I mean, like, literally, that's just what they that, I mean, literally, they are. They're so they're so their media is so single track. No, no, but, but Andrew, here's what bothers what? me about Canadians. They'll they'll be based on like other stuff, right? Like they'll be like, yep, yep. You're, you're nodding your head, right? And well, it's not clear. they're cool. And all of a sudden they get to that last point, like. But healthcare, and you're like, what? Like, how does this happen? Now, now, Phil, you guys actually have your NHS is very similar to ours, except that it, yours is a, the, all the country is one health authority, whereas in Canada, each province is its own health authority. But okay. well, that makes sense because I mean, your yeah. provinces are bigger than the UK anyway. Yeah, much bigger. Um, but I mean, it's a similar but, system in that, like, you, you can go to the emergency department and I d- leave. I, I didn't and not realize pay a dime. how. Yeah, I didn't realize how similar it was in just in terms of the attitude. Because I mean. It's been around for so long to us. It's, oh, yeah, it's just the NHS. And like yeah, we, we, we never expected to be particularly good at its job or anything like that. But then when we were doing the Olympics and they rolled out <clears throat> like all of these like fireworks and like shows and stuff like this, like the various parts of Britain that we're going to be really proud of. And they concentrated on the fucking NHS, like the biggest money sink that we have in this country. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you guys, the universal health care that we have, and that's the proper name for it, right? Uh, it was created by Tommy Douglas, who is the leader of our Communist Party, uh, the ne- New Democrat Party, NDP, right? That's like that's like AOC levels of Democrat socialism. Right, right. Right? So um, that is our national treasure. Like, it's like, okay, what is Canada? Universal health care, the discovery of insulin. Uh, Frederick, that was Frederick Banting out of the East Coast. Um Maple syrup. Now, hold on. Apologizing. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you talk to a Canadian, right, who literally has two brain cells to rub together, and you ask them, how is it free, quote unquote, free health care if, and then you show them the true cost of what they're paying, what do, how well, do they respond to that? Well, that's the misnomer, too. Like most, like a Canadian who tells you it's free health care doesn't know what they're talking about, first of all. Well, um, no, no, no. Or no, talking but, about. But, he, <laughs> but here's the thing, Tim, probably like in the United States, here's the thing. It is free. Because I imagine, now I don't know the Canadian tax code, but in America, three out of five people pay zero on their taxes. Yeah, pretty much the same here. Zero. So it is free for most people. It's absolutely free because they are not contributors. But I mean, my whole thing is, and this goes to the 19th, Phil, I mean, it's the it's the backdoor way to repeal the 19th and get not just not just <laughs> uh, women, you know, I mean, you want to do, do that, but also um, guys who are leeching off the system. You don't get to vote if you are not a net contributor. Yeah, now, almost anyone in Canada, if you're in Canada, you are a net contributor because our. Um, <laughs> are well, you sure? Our, are well, you our sure? Sa- our sales taxes. No, no, no. But, but Tim, 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 when I say net contributor, I mean you are giving more than you are receiving. Yep. Yes. So if you are not paying more than the benefit you're receiving, 
did you know you get taxed on your benefits in Canada? Like you are you get, fucking like, old age, kidding me right old age, now? Old age security. Wow. If you get old age security, if you get uh, disability, if you get um, uh, what is it, uh, the universal oh child God. care benefit, those are all taxable income. You have to report those. You, you know, get people, a slip from the government that says we paid you this much and you owe us this much tax. People always ask why I hate Canada so much, and <laughs> it's like it's like it's this shit. There are there are some things that are tax exempt. There's not many of them, and certainly not a, the bulk of the payments we make. And then there's of course sales taxes, right? You go to the mm-hmm. store and you you buy a stick of gum. You still pay taxes on it. So, so what what tax exemption can Phil try to slip in for uh, for the adults? Like, what can we mark them as? Can we mark them as agriculture? Or... Uh, make them make them Native American uh, cultural products. Yes, I love <laughs> it. I love it. We'll just put the headdress on and we're good, right? We yeah. got it. Yeah, just uh, basically look like Justin Trudeau when you show up, painted in like uh, war paint and. Not black. Oh, I thought you meant blackface. Black <laughs> yeah, no, right. Drex is, Drex is leaning forward. He's like, "What do you say?" Look, well, here's the thing. I look at I look at places like Canada, and when when people start using the words like free, one of the things that you'll notice really quickly is that the only people that use the word free a lot are corporate goons who are at the top, and then you have the people at the bottom, which are ratchet ass single welfare moms. Yeah. Because Phil, have you ever been around single moms who have kids? Here's what they do. The kid goes like this, a chew. You know what the kid, you know what the mom does? Oh, we got your kid in the ER. Straight down to the top. Straight down. Because, oh, because straight if you ne- if you don't pay for anything, you like words. Now watch this. Andrew, on the flip side, if it wasn't for my daughter, I would have been dead because of my uh my appendicitis, right? Mm-hmm. So I just kept I was in a downward spiral, right? I just kept getting worse and worse. I refused to go to the doctor. Because as you know, Phil, you go to the doctor. And uh, you have a bill. I mean, I, I think the cheapest you can get to it, you can see a doctor in the United States for like literally anything. Like, uh, Andrew, I checked your pulse. All right, you're good. Yeah. The cheapest is if you can walk out there anything less than, say, two to 300, you're like, yes, yeah. it wasn't that bad. Like, it wasn't that minimum. bad. That's yeah. a minimum. So, so, Phil, the idea of going to a doctor in the United States when you're a net taxpayer, it's daunting because you're like, dude, I don't, last thing I need, it's kind of like going to an auto shop. You show up to an auto shop, you're like, wait, how much? Oh, fuck. you know, and you had to remind me about that, Adrian. And, and, and that's what happens, though. I mean, Andrew, you you've been there, right? Like, what's, what's and, the and cheapest? Here, but here's the thing. But here's the thing, Drex. So even, and, and I think this may be a male in- instinct, though, because like even in Korea, where like if I go to the doctor, it's like ten dollars or twenty, right? Because they've got they've got national health care, and I'm required to pay, right? And I have to pay mm-hmm. it every month, so it's not it's not necessarily free. I pay about the equivalent of a hundred bucks a month. Right. But when I go, it's like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. But even then, I don't want to go. You know, yep. sometimes like I'll go and this girl, like, uh, you know, <laughs> the girl I'm seeing will look at my toe and she'll be like, hey, your toe's fucked up. And I, cause I just hit it and there's blood all over it and stuff. And I'll be like, oh, I'll just walk it off. Right. Yep. Cause that's yep. the guy thing. Well, it's like deal with it, suck it up, rub some dirt on it and keep going. Right. That's yep. how my dad raised me. But it's like, no, 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 you need to go. Right. Like you need to go to the doctor. Um, that's just my instinct. Like I don't want to go and pay. Yeah, they and maybe they, women that's women naturally them. have a different instinct because I mean I yeah. told you guys the only reason why I went to the doctor over my uh, uh, chin that was quadruple the size was because Lady Rackets and her cousin were literally screaming in the bathroom and were like, yeah. "No, no, you need to go right now. You gotta go. I'll take you. You gotta go." And then Nick was like, "Okay, fine, I'll take him." But um, <laughs> <laughs> um. But but here's the thing though, like I always said this though, the the irony of course that you know we okay we always bash women for being naggers all the time, right? Yes, yeah. The irony to nagging though is that okay, part of what makes men men is that like when they 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 do uh, they do assessments, right? Okay, rather than listen to her screaming all day, I would rather just go to the doctor just to satisfy her. To so stop that. To, just stop to stop that. Like how can yeah. I stop this from happening, right? Yeah. So of course. The, the flip side is a lot of times, let's face it, Phil, when you hear about guys getting sick and something like, like, you know, really severe, when they finally get into the doctor, the doctor's like, oh man, it's a good thing you came in because, you know, this is really sick. You know, you're like, oh, man, that's, <laughs> you know, like when, when I went in, Phil, from, from my chin, and I was like, I was like, no, doctor, uh, 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 fine. And he's like, dude, he goes, yeah, it, it, he goes, it looks like that because it's infected. And I was like, uh, 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 he's like, no, dude. Phil, they literally burst my chin, let all that stuff drain out, right? Gave me shots in my chin, right? 
they're giving me steroids in the chin, and then I get hit the uh, the anti-inflammatory stuff and all that other stuff, right? To get all of that. So then, like, 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 like two days later, it like like ninety percent better. I was like, damn, it's yeah. a good thing I listened to Lady Rackets and her cousin screaming all day. <laughs> um, because like I said, that, that's that's Phil. It's the same thing that happened with my appendix. I just kept going downhill, and I, I refused to go to the doctor. The moment my daughter jumped on me, and I went, "Oh!" and I remember going, "No." Nope. So, have you ever been injured and you knew something was wrong? The moment the moment you got hurt, you're like, oh, "Something's off." When right? I broke like, my leg, and I yeah, heard yeah, it. Greg. You heard, yeah, you I know, you heard like, oh. the break. Your eyes turned that big, right? Because she, when she landed on me, Phil. I was, I'll never forget. I was lying on the couch like this. So when she runs up behind me and jumps, she lands dead on the appendix, right? And it is, it is one of the most unique pains I've ever felt. Cause the moment she landed, I was like, Oh, I was like, my eyes went like this. I was like, something's wrong. I immediately knew something. I was like, something's off. Like, like my body didn't feel the same anymore. So when she left that next night and I was curled up on the floor in the fetal position in pain, it was actually, uh, uh, my homegirl that I was seen at the time. She was the one that was all about, you better go to the doctor. I, I, same thing. I was like, fine. Because she asked me, you know, oh, this is a prime example. She asked me why I wasn't going in then and there, right? Like, you need to go mm-hmm. right now. You can't even walk, blah, blah. <laughs> Andrew, do you, know my, do you know what my answer was? I, I why, can't imagine. Go ahead. Go why ahead. Why didn't I go to the to the hospital at 2 in the morning? <laughs> Take a guess. I don't know. Because uh, cause you're, you're tired? I don't know. The cost. Oh, I got to go to the ER. Okay, yeah, yeah. You want, and, the, and the weight. In the way, Phil. Yeah, they pretty much let you die out there. They will let you die out there. So I'm sitting there like, wait, wait, do I really want to go to a hospital and pay? Because you start going into ER at uh, at those hours, Phil. When you get that bill, you're going to go like this. They should have just killed me. (laughs) You're going to get – Andrew, I know you've heard of some bills, right? No, like you've heard true. of those bills that they like people get up. Like, dude, this is no lie, man. There the are people 30K, that, the, yeah, yeah, thirty, 30 fifty thousand. I'm Phil. Drex, four, you spent three days in the hospital. Fifty thousand dollars. Like when I was bitten by a bat and they gave me the rabies vac- vaccine in the ER, twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> I'd still prefer that system over the one Canada has, where people just die <laughs> waiting for the doctor. <laughs> Dude, they, they put you on a stretcher and they just wheel you into the hallway, right? Oh. And then like seven, eight, nine hours later, oh. perhaps a nurse comes by and checks your pulse, and they're like, "Oh shit!" Uh, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Ours is dude, a little I'd different. Still prefer that because in the UK, if you've got something unusual that's wrong with you, you can get seen pretty much straight away. And for all that they will tell you that there's effectively no cost. Um, outside of your income tax that you would pay, we have something called national insurance, which goes mm-hmm. towards your um, government pension and to pay for any uh, uh, medical costs. So you're paying it month in, month out, even if you, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. So if you take that over years, you've actually cranked up like a lot of payments actually into the medical thing. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of a, a payment that you make regardless. Now, of course, if, as Drex was saying, if you're right at the bottom, You've never paid any income tax. Chances are you won't pay any national insurance. Nothing. And they are the ones who just say, you know, <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go down to the doctor again. I've, the I've doctor's like, oh, eyes. you again. That's the third time this yep. week. Yep. Well, and the, here's the thing. They always have multiple kids, right? That's mm. how they pimp the system. There was a woman in the UK. I remember seeing her, Phil, some basic Becky that you guys had. This chick had some insane amount of kids, right? And she just worked that system. I mean, look, go look at some of these women's uh, fertility. They are taken care of by the system for like a 35 year stretch because they, they space out the kids, right? Because if you say, Hey, uh, you know, I get assistance until I'm, you know, uh, to the kids 18, all you have to do is just space out your kids. I mean, seriously, go, go ask a welfare mom, right? Go like this. Okay. So tell me the ages of your kids, right? A woman can be 50 and have a kid still in the house easily. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. my youngest is, is, you know, like, think about it at the, at the very 15. age of their fertility. Yeah. You're talking 10 to 15 years old. Because yeah. they had a kid at, you know, 35, 40. So it's like, it's not unusual to see a woman who's like 38 years old have a kid. I mean, the, kid, the kid's she, probably is slightly uh, Down syndrome, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, kids, man, even yeah. better. They get more money. Uh, make sure that you say that you are ADHD, you get more money, yeah. right? The, 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 I don't know if people know this. They will sign it off. They will sign yeah. it off, and you get more benefits. So so when you see the system, you go, damn, it's this is what you're up against. And, and so, like I said, when when I see any of this uh, like I said, when I told Phil earlier, anytime I see a win, I'm smiling. 
right? It's cathartic to me. Any win that because guys don't get it. guys hold so many L's, Andrew. Like, let me ask you this, Andrew. In your lifetime, what's the biggest W you ever saw from that, that a guy won? Like, like was it a divorce? Was it um, he sued no. a company? Oh, against the, uh, yeah, against the uh, well, you're saying uh, in general or against in the general. woman or like okay. in general, like, like, like a guy yeah, that says, it's "Man, I won." Not winning a divorce. It, it's it's typically when you make a giant business deal. For example, when you sell your company and you make you know a a hundred x on what you started on, right? Oh no, no, no. I'm talking about an actual court case that. where he's he's the defendant. Okay. So it's, it's got to be a case where he's the defendant, where you say, hey, "I won." A court case where he's a defendant. Yep. Hmm. Like like Johnny Depp won. You see what I'm saying? Johnny she Depp has to pay him. Him. That That's a win. Yeah. OJ Simpson say, kept his freedom and kept himself out of the death chair. Like that's a win. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. W for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's, 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 a, that's a huge W. w. That's yeah, a huge W. That's a huge W. I mean, I, I saw I saw one where a guy had his business partner robbing him blind, and he Ooh. not only got control of the entire business, but he got uh, recovered all of those damages and attorneys' Ooh. fees. And their attorney got hit with sanctions. That was like probably Ooh. this was a, a meat market case in Miami. It was fucking great. Um, but yeah, that that's one of the biggest W's I saw because this guy it was his whole life, you know. And yep. yeah, it wasn't a million dollar deal, but a lot of these big corporations they don't really give a fuck one way or another. But when it's a guy's business who you built, you know, imagine Phil, you need bring in a partner and they try to steal your business. Mm. That's your livelihood. You yep. built this right yep. yourself. You know, that's to me that's huge. And I'd, here's the thing. I'd be so invested. I, I would just make them disappear. I wouldn't say, to, to yeah. take them to court. <laughs> which, is, which is how a lot of people Nameless handle it. channel with some concrete shoes. Yeah. But I've, got a, I've even, got a W. The, uh, go, go. Yeah, it's a, so a buddy of mine won sole custody off the mother. Oh, wow. Supervised visitation for her. Wow. In what world is this? Uh-huh. No, uh, my buddy did, had the same thing. He won yeah. because... It's so rare. She became, like, yeah, drugs? she became a meth head. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, drugs. yeah, yeah. It's always Man. drugs. Yep, it's, it's, it's the person. only reason he won. Like, and, and here's the thing: there's no guarantee of that. Her parents testified against her at mm-hmm. the custody case. Damn. If there's Ooh. conclusive evidence of drug use, that's the only thing where they like in law they cannot do it. Drex, she walked in. She looked like she had been coming down <laughs> from like a twelve. You know. Oh no. <laughs> she fit the narrative. At least she a made picture. it. She, he showed me a picture. It's like exactly what you think, right? Like just a bone face, hair matted up and uh, tangled and possibly. But see, here's the problem, Tim. In America, you can still lose that case. I, there's dudes who have lost to actual Canada. crackhead moms, like literal crackheads. Like they show up to court. Yeah. The guy's in a suit. He's working. His ex is a literal crackhead and she'll win. And the dude's going. And then the kids wind up getting deleted later, right, Phil? Or, or right. neglected. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, my God, I can't believe she was a loving mother. And everyone's just like, bruh. Uh, no, it, it's so yeah, rare but that by the you way, take notice. Did you hear that the OnlyFans, uh, Courtney, I covered it the other day, but Courtney Clenny, the uh, big titty blonde who killed the uh, the black boyfriend uh, in Miami, the OnlyFans girl, she's uh, she got arrested in Hawaii finally. She was there on uh, rehab. So she oh. her ass is going to go to trial now. Which you getting extradited? Good. She actually died to Florida. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember hearing. Now, now, hold on. I got to say this, though. Okay. Okay. I'm fair. <laughs> I'm a fair. I'm a fair guy. Okay. I don't care what happened to that dude. Let me tell you why. Okay. Can we all agree that if you date or marry an OnlyFans? Okay. Let, let me make this clear. If you date or marry a sex worker, whatever happens to you is what happened to you. You guys all agree on that? Yeah, no, you're asking for it. He you see what I'm saying? Like, 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 whatever yeah. happens, it's like, bro. Oh, n- now, watch this, though. I'm going to show you how fair I am. Is that not what we say, Phil, when women get with, like, thugs, bad boys, drug dealers? Because, hey, whatever happens mm-hmm. to you is what happens to you. You see what I'm saying? What did you expect? Yeah, get- what did you expect? So, so it, 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 this dude, this simp, if he's going to be stupid enough to uh, – oh, that's a pick of the – uh-oh. No, yeah, yeah just Here, so I, in case you I'll want to pull this up. up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this dude. Yep. Yeah. That's him. Simp. Look at his eyes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> straight to the fucking eyes. No, Rex, I did this with a I did this exercise with a buddy of mine because he got used oh, to a booty call. Shit. Right? And then they took pictures in like one you know those booths at the mall where they take a bunch of pictures of you? Yeah. And I'm just like we, we have those all over Asia. I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna say I've never been in one. I, I definitely have. But yeah. And, and I'm just like, man, look at her body language compared to yours. And he's like, 
I got used for a booty call, didn't I? <laughs> She's using him just to like have a man on social media. When when you outlive your usefulness, they get rid of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all this right. was. One hundred percent. He he outlived. Yeah. He he literally outlived his usefulness. And let I me mean, look at him. His thing, this is a well built dude. Like I remember seeing other pictures of them when this case first happened. He's a buff dude, you know, whatever. I'm like, and, and that and Drex, that's the defense. That even in my chat the other day when I was talking about this, they're like, "How did a woman kill a jacked dude?" That's what that's what the, the that's yep. what some people were saying. And they don't understand. Women don't kill jack dudes the way a man would. Okay. Yes. Like, what's her face? Jody Arias waits till Travis is what vulnerable, right? Yes. He's in the shower. He's naked. It's slippery. I think she shot him first, right? And then right. stabbed him. Yeah, yeah. Shoot him to incapacitate him. And then, then stab. stab. See, women aren't going to like walk up to you. Like I said, a dude will just come right at you, right? Right. It's on. If you guys think a woman will ever like walk up to you knife in hand like this and just, yeah, I'm about to do. No, no, never. They're, they're going to, it's going to be after set. Like you've heard about no. uh, like Griselda Blanco, right? Black Widow. They delete you like after sex, you pass out or something, she slits your throat. They're not going to just do it when you're, you know, yeah. aware of them. Drex, if they come off to you with the knife, it's all for show. It's all for show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they ain't going to do nothing. Yeah, yeah. The threaten with the knife. That yeah, is, threatening with the knife means they're not going to do it. Yeah. No, no. Like, I, I'd probably laugh. I'm like, you're half the size of me. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Come on. You should just be aware of that if, if, you you have a knife or if you wake up and she has a knife then she's gonna do something like uh oh, yeah. do you remember a case uh andrew should remember nick harper remember that name andrew that is that is ringing a bell but i let me let me he was the colts player harper. who's he woke up to his girlfriend waving a knife in front of him like this oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay, sliced yeah. him she sliced his ass up before a playoff game man true story nick harper yeah when I saw that picture, Drex, he had like oh, a hold on, hold on, hold on. grin. The wife said it was accidental, so we got to believe that story, Drex. Uh, I'll believe all women. Oh, wait, hey, oh. you know who else? Uh, uh, Andrew, who was that that got caught up? Uh, I believe it was in your, your old town, man. They were in Florida. In Miami in 305? Someone. Cam Chancellor. Was it Cam Chancellor? Oh. No, Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. That's okay, who it was, Thomas. wasn't it? All Remember right. that? Earl all Thomas right. and yeah, his more. cousin were smashing... Some some three oh fours in a hotel, Phil. Yeah. She shows up with with the, the damn gun, man. She shows up with the burner. And, oh, and I don't know if you heard about this. Some uh some uh little Mei Ling, little Ling Ling. She just went ahead and poisoned Ling -ling, her husband guys. for years in his applesauce. You hear about that story, Phil? It's she poisoned this man's yeah. applesauce. There, yeah, I the, did see an article too. Like a guy caught her on nanny cam pouring poison into the coffee. Yeah, that's what Koopa's talking about. Koopa says women will poison your coffee. Yeah, I mean that's that that's something. See, the thing is, like that's a level of maliciousness and for, and like a forethought that most men don't have because we just do that heat of the heat of the moment sort of thing, right? You catch a guy in bed with your wife and you just fucking murk him right there. That's you know your blood's still hot, whatever. They used to actually uh, protect that in the law, sort of that as a lesser uh, culpability. Um, don't really do that anymore, but. Where the hell is that? Uh, women, it's like you got to be thinking about that stuff. I mean, poisoning your coffee, that's malicious. I've got a customer who suspects his wife's doing that to him, so he had himself checked out. Or what did he find out? That's bad when you uh, suspect your wife is doing that. I, I suspect nothing. He hasn't said anything as yet. Um, that means he's gone. Tested. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I spoke to him on the phone. The oh, okay. <laughs> I can see Bill. No, I don't I think, not think, anymore. Yeah, I think the chap is good. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't even need any more dolls from me. Like, uh. I went to go visit him. His new forwarding address is at the gravesite. I wonder what's going yeah, on. Yeah. It's... But again, it's one of those customers where he's been married to her for like, you know, a few decades, but they haven't slept together in the same room for 15 years. That is insane why, why to me. Why bother? That is insane to me. I know it's true, Phil. I know it's true. Hmm. But th those stories, when I hear them, I'm like, how does anybody with self-respect? Uh, 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 there you have there it. There you go. Because they don't have any. Yeah, exactly. Well, well it, his problem. reasoning is that um, when he was seven or eight, his parents uh, divorced and it really fucked him up hard. So he wouldn't do it to uh, his kids. I, but I, I've I reasoned know. with him, your kids are adult now. They're all married yeah. and stuff. They've got their own kids. So he's starting to come around to the idea.
How does that reflect on you as a parent where you say that my, you know, 24 year old kid can't handle my divorce with his mother? And, and would you want your kid to go through the same abuse that you're going through right now? Would you want them to live through it just for that? You know, Although follow would, your example. Andrew, I would argue that if you've seen your parent go, you know, like if you've seen your father go through that, it's you're destined for the opposite. You're just hyper aware of it. Yeah, I, I mean, if you see, if you go through a, a, a bloody divorce, you know, and you, you do see that as a child, that does affect you. I think it affects men and women differently, honestly. But, um, you know, it, with a lot of men that I see that come from that background, they'll say I never again, and they don't want to do it, right? Yep. Whereas yeah. if I if I meet, you know, if I'm in the United States and I'm dating a girl and she's like, my parents divorced when I was kids, there were, there's always an issue. There always is some always. issue. Never, never not. And guys, I have to bounce now because I have to make my flight. I just wanted to stop in to say hello to everybody. Oh, definitely. Um, of course. But, def but definitely I'll be back. And Phil, I need to get you on my, I have a new channel. So I want to get you on my second channel. So I'm going to hit Excellent. you up on Discord. Okay. I'm starting a Discord. So I'll hit you up on Discord. <laughs> what a guy. All right, guys. Andrew, it's I'll always a pleasure, later. sir. Talk later. Peace. Oh, be by good. the way, Drex, two warnings on my video. Two warnings. <laughs> the first time ever an age restriction in a content warning. Yeah, so you know, Kat sent that to me. And, she oh, said, oh, sorry, "What did you Rex, What did Rex. you guys do?" And I lost the most subscribers in one day ever. Oh, that's the. Part. Are you are serious? There. Going down. Yes, yes. But guess what? I regret nothing, motherfuckers. How, wait, <laughs> who, how, we, Andrew? That was quality content all the way through. Lost subscribers, and in a very great episode in terms of viewership, clicks, everything. What? else. What? Uh, and Marv came through. Shout out to Marv. But, oh, oh, God. Uh, oh, no. Hey. Bro, Marv he, came through. Marv big. shows Marv's up a fucking G. with 400 <laughs> bucks. I got money. <laughs> Just, <laughs> he fucking bankrolls that stream. I'm like, he literally right. bank, Phil, he literally bankrolled the whole stream. Like, so, so Andrew's talking and it says, I got money. 100 bucks. <laughs> Andrew says there's two there's more there. words. And he's like, I'm paying for these girls' tuition, 100 bucks. And he's just like, <laughs> I, like, like, I'm supporting the WNBA, uh, 100 bucks. And Andrew's like, so, so you know, the red tabs keep popping up. And someone's like, where does this guy get money from? Like, it's just, yeah. He's not spending it on women. Yeah, he goes, yeah, stop spending it. It's like, you can't help but laugh. It's like, Andrew, here's the thing. I've talked to Nick about this. Yeah. Is that Nick's like, yeah, Drex, keep coming on. I just got to purge this normie audience. Because you oh, start no, getting happy. these like I'm weirdo the Amber Heard people were still being weird. Yeah, yeah, people you, that are really yeah. Weird. You start getting these like you know okay, you know what I think they, I would I would call them I would call them the Puritans, right? Yeah. The the fake Puritans. Oh, they they come in there. Rex, and all, I told you I said this on stream. I'll say it again. The ones that really get mad are the conservatives. They are hundred percent. They they are the most mad. They have the most violent reaction. Oh God, they, they're, they, they're hilarious. You know, in the most hilarious thing is, like I said, you're going to be banging their wife in, in, in you know, in a couple months, right? You know. Uh, that's speaking the, of which, that's the weird oh, thing. Andrew, true story. Uh, mm -hmm. Just happened uh, yesterday. It carried into today. Uh, there's a new uh, new gangbang coming for uh, this chick that looks like a cross between like Claire Danes and Amy Adams. All right. Um, little five foot one chick, and I actually right. sent it to Whiplash. The way she talks about her beta cuck, Phil. It, it almost would make, Phil, if you still had feelings for simps in the world who are dating, you might actually take off your glasses and shed a tear for this poor sap. <laughs> so. Do you think he knows? Drex, do you think he knows? No, no, this, this guy doesn't know. No, you got me right. Oh, he doesn't know and he's not in denial? No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's cucks and there's cucks in denial, right? Yeah. This yeah, is the yeah, dude yeah. that, like, the, the, in, Andrew, you've seen this. Yeah. The guy who, like, doesn't get sex or he barely lasts or, you know, he doesn't get any affection. He, you gotta remember, a lot of guys like you just said, Phil, that ha that was their reality with their parents. So they they just think that's what marriage is. Like, yes. like well, I thought I was gonna get lots of sex, but this is just the way it is. This is how my parents were. I, you know, that, that's when they, they try to cope, right, Andrew? They drink the copium, they go like this. Mm -hmm. Look, it's about togetherness and family. It's not all about sex, sex, sex. sex. So you're like, you're only saying that because you're not getting it. You're trying to turn mm -hmm. your necessity into yeah, a yeah, yeah. virtue, into a right? virtue, right? Yeah yeah, 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 no, that's that's not why you you didn't marry her to be watching uh, uh, Gilmore Girls reruns, uh. right? That's that's not why you got married, right? <laughs> a part of my soul just died when you. Said I mean, that. seriously, yeah, like, uh, Andrew, you've seen that, right? Yeah, like guys I, who will they yes, they will look yeah. you in the face and tell you 
this is what it's about when you know they're miserable. Drex, I had a guy whose girlfriend at the bar, and this is a, another lawyer, two lawyers. She is literally going around. She does it at every professional event. She gets drunk. And she flirts hard with somebody. She comes on hard to somebody at the same bar as her husband. Ooh. And she's like really comes on to them. Her point is she tries to get like free drinks out of them. But she's like rubbing their leg, grabbing their cock, all this other stuff. And eventually there becomes an incident. And her husband always has to drag her out of it, drag her away. But, but he's constantly in denial. He's constantly like, no. So what does he say? Is. This is just how it is. This is or, or, or she, is. she's I, just drinking. She she is yeah, she's just yeah, being yeah. friendly. She, she, yeah, she just yeah. gets she just gets really weird. It's how she like, is. It's how she is. It's <laughs> it's a fucking delusion in their brain, and they sustain it. Some people, Drex, their brains are just wired differently. Oh my! There's no God. rhyme or reason to it. Like and on that there note, are people. There are people. <laughs> you could shoot them into outer space, see the Earth, and they'd still think it's flat. Yeah, yeah, right? it's yeah, it's a trick. Yes, I gotta go for real. So, oh, peace out, Andrew. Peace out. All right, yes, yeah, so I'm about to hop off here and go yeah, get myself yeah, I don't something know what to eat. To Anna, but well, uh, yeah, just I, just I'll, hit, I'll message you. Yeah, just hit me up when she's ready. I'll I'll just be uh, basically backstage. I'll be ready. But yeah, Phil, thanks again for coming on. I know it's late, late for you. It's, what two o'clock? Damn. Yeah, I got getting that way. No, oh, yeah, well, yeah, Phil, go ahead, right. get yourself some rest. Thanks for coming on. Like I said, I love getting you on earlier, so you're not dying. By the way, um, um, you're only TFM, half dying. TFM's down for any day of the week as long as it's in the evening. So, like this this hour and later. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have to uh, figure out it's time to get TFM on. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, but Phil, thanks again. I'm about to go and eat a little snack and then uh, come back as soon as Anna's ready. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, just put like something up on the screen here. For oh yeah. Me. I'll leave the I'll leave it running. All right. All right. See you guys later. Thanks, Phil. a real fraud of a mushroom.